Today on the Av Podcast, this is NBA season, man. Like the off season is is like the third season of the NBA season. So we dive all up in it. We get all up in them guts. <laughs> all right. So I'm joined by my South Shirai family member Julian, aka Jules the Commish. I'm also joined by the all-time Canadian college basketball scorer Anthony Bachelor. He's got a new acronym that we'll announce in just a few minutes. But we're diving deep into this NBA season. We're talking Wemby. We're talking about if Charlotte picked the right guy or not. Obviously, the biggest thing overall is this Dame Lillard cloud that's hanging over everything this offseason. It's kind of stalling everything, the momentum of the rest of the offseason. So we dive heavy into that. We talk about James Harden and a whole lot more. So just lock in. Stay tuned with us. I appreciate all the support. Once again, as always. You know, this podcast was, I mean, we dive extensively. We're looking at the time of, of how long this, this is recorded. I'm not going to go any longer with the intro because I just want to, I want you guys to dive into this as well. I definitely think you guys are going to enjoy this one. So, you know, definitely hang on, get into this one with us right now. Hit the like and subscribe buttons. Check out SashaRav.com for everything into the catalog. I got an event coming up. In the next couple of weeks, for those that may know or may not know, I'm going to dive into that at the end of the podcast, but I don't want to go any further because I just want us to get into this right now, all right? It's the Off Podcast with Cal C on South Sharaf Radio. It's the Off Season. Let's go. Welcome to the Av Podcast with Cal C on South Sharaf Radio. Welcome back to the Av Podcast, where I'm joined by two guests right now today. Um, Number one is my South Shirai family member, regular uh, addition to the podcast, Julian, a.k.a. Jules the Commish. How you doing today, sir? Good, my friend. I'm doing very good. Yes, sir. And and next up, I got the uh, all-time Canadian basketball scorer in uh, Canadian Canadian college basketball history, I should say. Plus, we got to go by another acronym right now. We got to call him Hoffa. He's inducted into the Hall of Fame for Durham College. So uh, please welcome Anthony Batcher to the show. How you doing today, Batch? Doing well. Doing well. Yo, congrats. Congratulations, man. I, I, I never knew that. taking it a little too humble, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I don't think it, it probably hasn't hit me yet. Maybe, maybe later on. Maybe closer to the time to probably get me. But, no, nah, I appreciate it, though, man. It's just, I love the game so much, so it kind of just... I was saying came actually. I was just put in the right position. Nice. Nah, man, that, that's dope. And and both of you guys don't even notice, but both of y'all are Seah- Seahawks fans. I don't know why, but both of y'all Whoa, are you, Seahawks oh, I, fans. Oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> man, yo, I don't think I ever ran into another Seahawks fan, like, personally. Like, I, I like, know, there's like, two. Randomly, like, there's two. <laughs> we don't need any more bandwagon dumpers anyhow. Yeah, that's what's damn. I, I feel that. That's what's Trust me, don't look at me to hop on that bandwagon. I will, I will pop all the tires in that bandwagon and push it off the bridge, if I, if I could. <laughs> Until you guys get out of the, out of our division, then I don't care. <laughs> but, but I do. But I would tell you though, as much as it burned me to, to watch the um, Legion of Boom win, I did really like the team secretly. Though I, I won't lie to you, I really love the Legion what? of Boom. I just, I just hated that you guys were were in my division. But I, but I love I, I did love like Marshawn Lynch and Richard Sherman and those guys. How could you not? Man, it uh, it, it would I think it turned many San Fran fans into Seahawks fans that year well, or those years. No, it really didn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> um, yes, man. So we're so we're here to talk about the um, the NBA offseason so far. Of course, there's been a lot of moves, a lot of transactions. As always, not as busy as it's normally been in the in the past years, but it's, it's had its fair share of movements. Um, case in point, the biggest one, of course, is the the cloud that's hanging over the NBA regarding Damian Lillard. The biggest news of the offseason, even bigger than Wemby finally crossing the pond, is of course Damian Lillard. You know, finally, finally asking for a trade right after the Blazers made a a five year commitment to Jeremy Grant. I don't know if Jeremy Grant should feel the ways <laughs> about that. <laughs> that trade request literally went out the day after. I'm like, damn. I'm like, I'm like, that's gonna be awkward if he comes back in the fall. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but how, however, though, with um. With him making this trade demand and, and requesting that he only goes to, to to the Heat, 
it puts him in a unique situation. And from your vantage point as fans, and I'll start with you. Um, let's go with the Hall of Famer today. I'll start with you. Mm-hmm. But but what do you think about this trade demand? And, and how do you guys how do you see this playing out? Uh, man, I, I see him going. To, I see him getting what he wants. I see him going to Miami. Um, more so on the basis that he stayed with Portland uh, through all through all that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to put this in the nicest way possible. He put up with a lot. Okay. I mean, for for for, for what he gives to the game, he, he he gave a lot. And I mean, not saying that management didn't try. I don't know what their vision was. Obviously, they probably would they would have had to gone through game, and he would have had some sort of agreement saying, "Okay, I'm with it, or I'm not with it. Uh, let us work this way, or that way." And there was and they came to some sort of agreement and yeah, okay, maybe we'll, we'll do that. But it just didn't seem to be successful. Now, mind you, there have been years where a roster, and you would say, I think they have a chance. I think they would be competitive to get to the playoffs and, and have a deep run. But it just didn't work out for them. And I don't know. I I, I personally feel like this just, and this just made, this was just made public for us at this time and why and that's why it just seems like it just came um not so much really out mm-hmm. of nowhere but but it, i don't know just certain things that lined up like with the signings and stuff like that gave vincent signing for him to leave miami i that I mean, just didn't really make sense to me mm-hmm. so I, I i feel like for him walking going to la is like yeah i already know what's coming this way and he he didn't he didn't he sign with the lakers before dame put that request in or no that was good mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think, been after. I think that might have been after. I think that would have been after. Yeah. So, but I, I like even like these guys, like they just know what's going on. Their representation, they they speak to these guys. They're constant. They're in constant communication with each other. And I'm pretty sure at that point it was, you know, listen, Gabe played some good basketball. Um, I mean, he had his his, his down moments with the with the demonstrators, but that's more so scouting. And he didn't really come off as well. Um, actually, I'd even say in the tail end of the, the Boston se- uh, series as well. Um, but I, I don't know. Dane, Dane, I think, is deserving of getting what he asked for. But the only thing is, because of his value, the team that he's on may not be able to get what he's worth. And so that has made it difficult for that to actually come into fruition. No, it makes sense. Oh, you know, go ahead, John. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I, I was just going to say, like, those, these small market teams like Portland and Toronto and Milwaukee, they have to throw the bag at these guys like, at that time. Otherwise, they're just going to let the, the the players are just going to walk. And so we, we learned that with Fred Van Bleet in Toronto. We didn't give him the money. Not to say he's deserving of the money. Not to say Middleton. He got, like, some outrageous money in Milwaukee as well. But at the end of the day, if you're a, a GM... You have to sign these players at what they want because you're not going to get nothing for them. I've been preaching that over and over. I said Masai should have signed Fred Van Vliet, like, um, not, well, not the number that he got in um, Houston, but I would have tried every which way I could to sign him. So for Portland, when they signed him, they to the, to the Supermax, what, two years ago? They had to give it to him. I didn't think he was, like, he's deserving, but, like, where that team was in terms of, of, um, bench players and world players and they weren't able to make a run they shouldn't have really signed him but you know he's a franchise player and whatnot but then you sign him and then you trade him right now like what they're doing now for me the most like thing that really got me off guard was the timing like the timing as you mentioned kind of empty was kind of like i guess the agents and they all know what's happening behind the scenes but the timing kind of threw me off like he'd be it was after the draft right it was after the draft yeah when he kind of like when this all came out like to the public so I thought like he should have done so, or the um, this should have been leaked out earlier, or if, if that's what he his intentions were. But if he came out afterwards to say after they signed Grant and after they drafted Scoot, now I want to be traded. I didn't think uh, that was the move to 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 actually do. And then and then to have only Miami, as you said, he does have the right to select what team he has, I guess, as a player. But I as a fan, I hate that. I hate that. I hate seeing. A player saying, I'm only want to go into this team or the super teams. I hate that as a fan, personally. So, you know, they're probably going to include a third team because Miami has zero assets I would want for Dame. Like, I wouldn't want Hero. 
I wouldn't want like a future 20, 20 30 first round like, you, protect, like, pick. You, you don't you don't want Nikola Jovic? Not Jokic, Jovic. <laughs> No, not Jovic. None of those guys. Haslam. I don't want any of them. I don't want any of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they're going to have to incorporate a third team, and it just pigeonholes that, that team that gives you that super max. Right? But anyhow, th- that's my thought. No, and, and it's funny because the the fact that he was on that live playing Welcome to Miami – you know, and then saying, "Ah, it's just a, you know, it's it's just a mistake. It's just a, just a coincidence." And then a few days later, he's requested a trade to Miami. It's like, it's like, you know, those oh, little, yeah. those little games. It's like after being that loyal for that long, like I, we understand that you want to leave, but I'm not saying don't be cl- like, be more classy because I mean he is pretty classy. He is classy. Yes, but, he is. but I was like, come on, man. Like if I'm a Blazers fan, I'm looking at like things like that. Like, wow, really? Really, dude? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. but at the same time, it's like, I like that he asked for a trade finally, but, you know, because he was so loyal to that franchise and that city for so long, you know, that whole region, you know, and, and you can argue that, you know, he's got to look out for himself. He's, he's got to do what is, what's best for his family. And, and living in Miami as a superstar and a multimillionaire, I mean, you know, you're playing for a team like the Heat. I mean, yeah, yeah. Nobody's going to look at but you like an asshole for doing that, right? He has money for his family. That's not really uh, like it's really now about winning, right? But he is thirty-one, I think. 31? Yeah, I think he's older. He's 30. older than that now. Yeah. He's Maybe at least 32. thirty-two. Yeah, Maybe. he's at least thirty-two. Right. So he wants to win right now, or at least make a run. He, you know, like so, money-wise, he's set. Family-wise, now he's just you know, yeah, trying to get. But but but, but get I'm some more light. Right, but I, I'm saying that like to your point, like he definitely limits the scope on what the Blazers can get. You know what I mean? Like you're never. I mean, look, when you have a superstar, you're never gonna get full value back for your superstar. And the only way you do that in the trade is by acquiring as much future picks as possible with at least an all star back. And Tyler yeah. Hero definitely doesn't qualify as that number one. You know, yeah. no matter how much picks you get back. But but here's the thing too that when I look at this, I, it it kind of I don't know. Miami's really good. We all we obviously know that their structure is really great. But is Miami really the best place from the go, though? I think, like, if you're sending him to the East, to me, I think there's, I don't know, I think there's there's, there's two better places from the go. I mean, it's, and it's been wildly Where? discussed. Where? Well, I'm, Where? I'm saying in terms of being able to keep, like, after you get them, you still have assets and stuff to, to have. You know what I'm saying? So, for, for me, number one, because, I mean, obviously, Miami doesn't have the assets. Miami, so that's what they got to force a, a third trade. But, like, there's two teams for me. There's There's Brooklyn. Because Brooklyn's got picks and young players that Portland would want, at least to come off the money, at least to come off the, at least give the idea that you want to. They can get, they can offer more than Miami can do, right? Hey, so hold on, hold on. Before you continue, you're talking about from the um, GM perspective, not from Dame's perspective. No, no, I'm talking about the GM. I'm talking from the GM perspective. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. like Dame doesn't want to go. Yeah, all right. Yeah, no, like, no, obviously, if the GM had a choice, he wouldn't. He wouldn't even look at Miami. Right, like, it wouldn't even look at my. But but I'm but I'm saying even if he lands in Brooklyn, they're still going to be pretty good while he's there. You know what I mean? And at least they that they have enough assets where, and especially if they can get rid of like if they get rid of like a Cam Johnson and certain guys who they just signed, that can make you get another star. Because right now, I mean, Mikel Bridges hold right on. now is hold on, hold on, I gotta that? stop you there. I gotta that? stop you there. I gotta stop you there. You said give up Cam Johnson. I'm no. I'm saying that like that's that's if you have to give it for Dame, I would do it for Dame. If you're gonna get oh, if if you're gonna if you're gonna get Dame and and possibly another player coming back, like you know in a future trade or what have you, I would do it for Dame. I would do it. You, uh, you're, still, uh, you're still keeping Mikael Bridges. Like, okay, okay. You're, you're okay, hold up. Okay, and, hold and so, you, may, you may not even have to give up Cam Johnson, depending on well. Again, this is a beyond distress asset because nobody wants Ben Simmons. But if you feel like you can revive him and the money kind of comes not close but close enough to match up with it, then you figure out a way to send him to Portland too if you can do that. Maybe you keep Cam Johnson. But I'm saying like they have enough they have enough assets to play with to make these type of trades. That's not, and, and, and at least by the end of it all, they can still be pretty good. Because even with Miami, you give up even if they give up the assets, they're they're pretty much gutting most of their core because of of Lillard's contract. Like Lillard's contract is like one of the biggest in the league, right? Who cares? Those guys, those those guys on the bench, at Miami didn't even play, like really. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say who cares. They had guys that step up, right? Um, but my point, like I, I can't. What, what's his name now? Shoot, not 
Gabe stepped up. What was the other dude Duncan that Robinson was killing? Stepped up. Not Duncan. Duncan did well. What's the other kid? Martin? Not Martin. Is it Martin? Yeah, Caleb Martin. Martin. Oh, yeah, Caleb yeah, Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Caleb would still be on the team if 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 they. One hundred percent. All you need is Martin and another bench player. You got the big three. You work with Bam, um, Butler, and Dame. You don't really need any anybody else because everybody else to me overperformed or overachieved anyhow. Mm. On Miami. So, but anyhow, going back to your scenario. I, like yes, Brooklyn has more to offer, but this is not even a possibility because he doesn't even want to go there. So, like you can look at any team in Milwaukee who have assets, Middleton, who, or even Drew. You, you trade anybody, and any team he goes on at the end of the day is going to be a playoff contender in the East, in the East at least for sure. He can come to Toronto. He can come to Toronto, and I guarantee you they will make a run. I guarantee you, one hundred. I don't. I don't think it would work. I think oh my I, gosh. Yeah, I think it would be like Portland. <laughs> really? Because you, 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 you would have to give up. You would have to, for sure, I'll tell you right now, Portland is not going to let no package get out of here without OG being involved in it. That's fine with me. Then OG. So now this is the thing. So now you have OG. That's gone. Yeah. And then you are going to package who else? We don't have no first round picks. We don't get those away. I think what we got maybe one next year. And chances are the world. We'll and it's top six not, protected. It's not. It's not top protected. No, it's top six protected next year's. Oh, top, uh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you get that. You get OG at eighteen million dollars. Masai would not let that go. So that's not going to happen. So that trade automatically is going to get tied off. He won't let OG go for Dave. No. That guy is worth. He's, he's, he's got. He's got eighteen million dollars. Okay. Dollars on the contract. You're not going to sign OG for more than thirty. And I think that's even a stretch when you can use that number mm-hmm. to begin with. Okay. So you're saying you give up someone that their value, his value, he hasn't reached his potential to get that kind of money that you're now going to give away to get a potential of someone that's going to be at the age of, you said he's at 31 right now, possibly at 33 at that time where he's going to be touching $60 million. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, as you get older, your body starts slowing down. Oh, yeah, I, I agree with you all there. I'm just saying that it would be an instant contender. I'm saying that's all I said. With okay. Dame, with, with Dame and, and Siakam and Berto and Barnes, Trent Jr., I think that will be... Listen, if you look at Miami's roster, let's, let's, let's look at Miami's roster. Who made it to the finals? Mm-hmm. It was really Butler and Bam. And the bench room, and the bench players stepped up. Mm-hmm. Martin and Duncan. There was no hero. He's, he's automatic. Like, the East he's, is wide open. The East know, is you, wide you open know, you, the, the thing with Miami, though, if he, if he does go there, he's automatically their best player, and I think he puts everybody in their proper place. Because I think as as much as I love Jimmy, like Jimmy would be an absolutely amazing second guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like even though they just went to the finals, it was a great run. Even when he got to the finals, it was like, okay, you, you understand why there's superstars and there's all-stars. Like he finally petered out. You know what I mean? At least to me. So that, that's why I'm like, if Dame goes there, he's automatically their best player. That's fine with me. I, I agree. I would agree. But but here's the, yeah. other, here's the other team I wanted to mention too yeah. that, I, that I think would, would be – I think would be a great I, – I just – I don't know. I see him being like a legend in this town if they were to, if they were to get him there. I think that team is Philly. Oh, boy. I think it's Philly. <laughs> I think it's Philly. And here, this, and, this, and this is why I say it. Like, obviously their history in the league is much deeper. They have the reigning MVP that, that needs another leader in place that can come through in the playoffs more so than James Harden. They haven't won a title – since 1983 and he would be a legend in, in philly just by the way he plays right now but if he can bring a chip yeah. there yo they're knocking down rocky statue and putting him in the beat up up there instead no i agree no and it he and they definitely have like the components or the players like maxi and, yeah, and he, like they, 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 do like they can make it but i'm saying that if he gets there they're they're gonna be they're gonna be like a, a championship contender if he if he gets there that would be a great place to go but I don't know. I know he doesn't want to go there. But I'm saying that would be an amazing place. I think from the go. The city. I think the city would embrace Lillard right away. Like that's a no nonsense player. Like he would fit into that culture immediately. How does that work? In terms of the, well, it, you would have to get rid of Maxi. You'd have to get rid uh, of. Uh, oh no, guys, come on. I mean, listen. I like Maxi. Is Maxi this nice that like he's off the table for Lillard? Yo, I like Maxi. I think Maxi's a, 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 a nice up and coming player. I really like him a lot. But I'm saying you wouldn't he's untouchable for Lillard? Like this is Lillard we're talking about. But 
You have to, but you have you can't forget though who you're giving up and that who Portland wants though because now you take Maxi. What are you doing with Anthony Simons? You're telling me you're going to now give up Anthony Simons for Tyrese Maxi just to, I guess, appease Damian, uh, Damian Lillard. In terms of, hey, listen, I want this and this. But we also got to remember who we're dealing with on the other end. The person that's running the front office in uh, in Philadelphia, the devil himself, Daryl Moore. I think I heard someone say the other day, Daryl Moore is the type of person that will trade you a bag of stale donuts for your best player. And that guy's <laughs> weird. He's basically like a fantasy <laughs> league GM. 100%. He's waiting, for you some- to, he's waiting for you to press accept. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. oh, I actually did a press accept. Hey, yo, yo, rescind that. Nah, I think we're gonna leave it where it is right now, man. Come on, man. Like, but at the same time, Tyrese Maxey, especially with the new coach that this got in Nick Nurse, Nick Nurse mm-hmm. likes those young guys. So to now get Nick Nurse there and then get rid of the young guy that could run your offense with no issues, because Maxey's now coming into his own where he can take over the offense. Ah. I think that would be a bad move to get rid of him. Oh, oh, Damian Lillard. Let me rephrase that. Matt Nurse does not like young guys. He likes run, guys that run the floor type guys. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't uh, develop. Oh, guys. sorry. My, my, my bad. My, my right. bad. But I know what you meant. I know what you meant. Guys that right. run the floor and push the ball. Right. When I run him to the ground. He would run Maxi into the fucking <laughs> ground. Oh, he will. <laughs> he will run 40 my, 45, 44 minutes a game. But no, I, I, I hear you. Can't I hear your point. He can't do that with Joel and B. What do you mean, like run him into the floor? Yeah. Not well, he's going he's gonna to play a minute. He's going to play him into the floor. He may not run him into the floor, but he's going to play yeah. in his minutes. All, all, all Nurse cares about is about winning. He doesn't care right. about developing players. He doesn't care about, like, getting players to to actually learn a new position or new, like, whatever. Well, they, he just wants to win. He doesn't give a shit. That's why he's not in Toronto anymore. Exactly. Exactly why. <laughs> that's where they saw. Um, that's where they butt heads, right? But anyhow... We'll see where Damon goes. I think he goes. If he, he's pretty much going to go to Miami anyway, so it's not even no point even talking about this. But at this mm-hmm. point, because he has not given any other teams, I wish he had given like three teams. I know that's not, but, that's what bothers me. That's what I'm like, why is it? I mean, again, I understand climate. I understand weather, the the structure of the team on top of everything else. I get it, but I I think like I said, I think a team like Philly, even even off the court stuff too. Like, <laughs> you know, he's a rapper. All that that whole Philly scene. He raps like a like an East Coast rapper. That shit will work with so many Philly guys out there anyway. And then and then on top and on top of that, this man's shoes would sell better and and, and a bigger I mean, and a bigger yeah. and a bigger in a bigger region like Philly over Come over on, Portland. Man. Like, no, nah, this this is, I, I think yeah. I think this, this would be a great place for him to go. More than Miami, I think so. Uh, you kill me, man. I yeah, you're, looking from a fan, you're looking at it from a fan point of view again. What I just said in the beginning, I wish, wish he had more teams on that list. But yeah, I, I wish. He, he, he's, I know he's, he's going. Not, I know. I know that's all he wants is Miami. But I'm saying, like, I think Philly, like, he would be a legend in Philly if if he was able to do. And it's and him landing there, I don't think it's that far fetched. I really don't. You swap out Harden and put Lillard in, in, in Harden's place. That team really would by the Celtics. It really wouldn't work. You don't it think it would work? He would. He would get no, by the. They would get by the Celtics. Yeah, well, they will now because they just got rid of their best uh, perimeter de- defenders, two of them, and yeah, Grant yeah, Williams yeah. And, 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 and um and uh, and Marcus Smart. Smart. So, yeah. so Celtics. If anything, if, I, if I'm looking at Celtics right now, I already think they. No, no, back. no. I mean that if you, in this this past playoffs, if you if you swap out Harden for Lillard. They're not losing game six on their floor. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, Cal, listen. Oh, no, no, I know. It's, 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 oh, it's debatable. It's debatable. It's debatable. I, I, can, I actually could see Philly winning that game with Dame over Harden. I, I, Harden I was a no-show. Can. Harden was a I no-show in that last game. But, but you want to know something? So is Embiid. So I, I mean, we, can't no say, we, 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 can't, we can't just leave it on Harden. We can't say that. I don't disagree with Embiid. I don't. I don't disagree from the Embiid side of things. I, listen, I've taken my shots at him the la- like the, the last few podcasts for how we played. It was, and I and I'm an Embiid guy. I was crazy disappointed in him this, this playoffs. <laughs> hey, we've had our discussions with Embiid. I, I'm still trying to figure out why people keep talking about. Listen, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's not a good player. He's good, but there's certain things. His mental is weak. In my opinion, is weak mm-hmm. for a guy that loves to talk. For some weird reason, if someone starts giving him the same type of energy, he can't handle it. I'm trying to figure out how he got so mad at Nick Claxton and threw him <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Well, Claxton was yeah, Claxton was getting the stare down. You said yeah, yeah. And, had, and had him, he had the real estate. <laughs> he always talks about Andre Drummond. I got real estate. I got real estate. Nick Claxton had all the real estate. Toronto real estate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and all of a sudden, he disappeared. He had, like, I don't get it. Like, yeah, he didn't, he didn't have a good playoffs. I mean, he, he was hurt, too. He, he was, was hurt, too. He did forget. get hurt. You're right. He did get hurt, He didn't too. play... Remember that first was a Boston series? No, was the the, 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 no, the, no, the was... Brooklyn series. He he didn't play. Bro- like, he missed at least two yeah, games yeah. in that series too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I think he missed game one. He missed game one of Boston though, for sure. I know that. Yes, he won he that game. He did. He did. It was his back, right? So when yeah. he got injured, they still went ahead. They beat. They beat Brooklyn. Like, okay, Joel and beat man. Listen, regular season, you get your points because you want to know why he's taking twenty five shots a game. Mind you, he's he's a big. And he's shooting. What's the percentage? I'm not even too sure what the percentage is. No, he, but, shoots, he shoots good. A good percentage. He deserved his MVP yeah, yeah. this year. We've had our discussion. No, 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 he did not. No, thank you. No, he will not deserve MVP. What are you talking about? He deserved his MVP this year. No, 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 he deserved that. No, no, he did not. Joker, Joker, Joker. Joker deserved it. Nah, not even. No, 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 Look, if you look at the we're stats, not, we're not um, going to say not even close. Like, we're not going to say no, no, no. I take that back. You're right. Sorry, 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 sorry. Listen, no, I shouldn't if, say not even you, close. If you want to argue for Jokic, I'm not. I'm not sitting there and I'm not going to tell you no. Like Jokic did deserve it too, but I'm saying like to say Embiid didn't deserve it. Like no, like he, he in a regular he did season, not deserve it over. Sorry, he deserved it was MVP season, right? But he did not deserve it over Joker. We had a better season. There's no question. There is no question. There is no question to me in my eyes. In my eyes, personally, but that's but that's getting off topic. La- last point, I'll, <laughs> la- last point I'll mention before we move on to the next question, though. Like, if I'm Portland, of course, if I'm Joe Cronin, Portland's GM, this is a career-defining trade that you're gonna have to make for at least for for him because you get defined by these type of trades when you're trading your superstar. You know what I mean? Like, you make a shitty trade, all of a sudden you're now Rob Babcock. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of it all, he's got four years left on his deal. You know, he understands that Lillard values, like, loyalty and, and respect in the city. So he doesn't, have to, he doesn't have the personality to hold him out, like, you know, to hold out on this team and stuff if he doesn't get his trade by, like, the by, say, by training camp. I don't – he doesn't seem to be that kind of guy. You know did you hear what he said, though? Not the, Did you hear what he said, though? No, I didn't see, hear what he said recently. What he did said, he say? like, if it takes me t- one, two – Three months? I don't care. Oh, you're talking about the GM. Get the best oh, deal. I thought you meant Lillard. Yeah, oh. yeah, no, I did hear that. Oh, I thought you know. I thought you were talking about the GM. I thought you were talking about oh, the no, GM. Oh, no, sorry. I, sorry. I, I was. I was. I thought you meant Lillard said something. Sorry. But I, I no, the GM. Because you said he's not one to hold. Like, okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 you're, you're right. You're right. No, I, so, yes, yeah, sorry. I, I'm, I'm wrong. Yes, I did hear what he said. I, I did hear that. But, um, yeah. like, yeah, I would I would just work, you know, just keep Lillard in the loop, work with him, stay patient. But I don't think a deal gets done right away. Like, yeah, I, I kind of agree. Like, you got to wait for the right deal to come along. You know, you're not, again, you're not going to get a dollar for dollar value, but you got to get you got to get somewhere close to that. Oh, so that means, and and essentially, this is not dependent on the Miami Heat. This oh, is dependent no. on that third. Oh, it's dependent on the third team. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. Maybe even a fourth team. <laughs> Seriously. Maybe. Like, yeah. But, maybe. Even but a fourth now, team. but but now, who takes advantage of this instead of? <laughs> Well, man, I'm about to get a piece of this part too. They don't want to go to another team other than Miami. Now I'm getting something out of this for sure. Is it going to be I get Tyler Hero? A lot of people like what team could Tyler Hero go to right now? That's that's the first question. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's there's probably a few teams that would want him. Right at the end of the day, he yeah. did you guys see that he unfollowed his Miami Heat and yeah. all that stuff? He unfollowed yeah. him. Yeah. He, he's uh, he knows he's out. He knows he knows he's yeah. out. But um, at the end of the day, though, to Anthony, like even if it's not a good fit at first, you just want asset, like, the best assets you can get, and then right. you can make it work and adjust trade and another player. Yeah. So at the Draft end of the day, picks. you got to get the best assets. Draft so picks. that's why, I, that's why I feel that I feel that Portland has missed the boat to make to pull the trigger on Dame for what he's worth or what the team can use from trading him. It's not going to be. It's not going to be of value. And yeah, even, I agree. Even, but, even with even with that third team, like you give up a game, he goes to Miami. You get a third team, and say you get three draft picks, right? Three first round draft picks. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to run. Like you're not. You're not getting Tyler Hero. So now you have to bring in another point guard to run your offense. What point guard do you run out? Run? Do you now move Simons to the to the to the one? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I would have 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 Shaden Sharp now at the two. 
Now, who moves to the three? Who moves are, to the three? Are you, are you guys are you guys forgetting that they drafted Scoot Henderson? <laughs> oh yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm acting like I forgot about that draft. You're right. Okay, so you got Scoot at the one. <laughs> you got Scoot at the one, and you got you got you got Anthony Simons at the two, Shane Sharp at the three, yep, Grant exactly. at the four. But who's at the five now? Because oh, most likely no, right now, right now he's, he's gone. He's gone. You know, he's gone because they can't. You, you got your room. Why do you keep him? Why? They've been, they've, actually, they've, been, they've been trying to trade him for years, to be honest. I know, but, so now, but that's the thing, right? But now you got to think about the money now. So is it worth keeping them if now you're going to, are we going to call it a rebuild or are we going to restart with no, the team? Well, ideally, you rebuild, right? You start, you right. start trading with all those old guys, ideally. But right. they'll, they'll be in a, good, in a great situation to rebuild with, with those three, Simon, Scoot, and Sharp. Yeah. Right. Amazing. So, so how much are we looking for then from Dane? Like you, you gotta, draft picks, but the thing is, said. is the draft picks, but the draft picks can't come from Miami because the reason yeah. why is because any any first round pick in from Miami is going to be low first round if this team is going to be good for you know for mm-hmm. the next five mm-hmm. years unless you're trading mm-hmm. like seven eight years out, which I don't know if you can even do that. So 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 the draft picks you're going to have to get is definitely going to have to come from that third team or fourth team. Like you're gonna you want you want you want to get picks where like you can still get a lottery. You know what I mean? Even if it's late lottery, you got to get lottery picks. You can't get like the twenty eighth pick in the first round. That, that doesn't mean anything. Can we name some teams that are starting to be lo- a little too loaded, like the Detroit Pistons? I like what they're doing, but now they're too loaded in the front court. It's weird. Yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know how that would work either, though. You give them. I mean, well, you can't trade Isaiah Stewart now. Yeah, they just resigned him too. I was like, why would they sign this guy to sixty four million? Mm-hmm. Then you have Marvin Bagley, Wiseman, Jim Duran, and then him. And then you still have Bogdanovich still. That plays the four. I know. Mm-hmm. They've been trying to trade him too as well. No, this right. play, again, you got assets though, Anthony. That's the whole that's the most important thing. You got players that can play that will be wanted by other teams. And if you as long as they can play and they're wanted by other teams, you're in a you're in a favorable position as a GM. Mm-hmm. You got assets. So but does it sound like go ahead. sorry. Sorry, does it sound like Cronin wants assets or he wants someone to basically not fill the role, but not do a restart, not do a, not I mean, a restart? If you're trading Damon, you're starting over. If you're trading yeah, yeah. Lillard, you're starting over. You, you, There's but, no but you, middle you, ground. You want at least a young star back, if not an all-star, and some picks. Like, that's, that's, like, still, that's the idea. Yeah, and, and that's still yeah but that's still starting over. Yeah, no, yeah, no for sure, for over. sure. But I'm saying, but that's that's ideally what you want. You want you're not going to get a superstar back. So at the very least, you want somebody that can be an all star or a potential superstar, and you want some picks to support that. So and that, that you can grow can along with sharp and e- Exactly, exactly, exactly. Why use a why, why use a verbiage of we're waiting for the right package? Well, because it's Lillard. That's why he's like oh, no, I, no, no, no. No, I understand that part. But now, for you waiting for the right package, well, if you're looking for assets in terms of we're saying we're saying picks. Well, it sounds like they already know what team they're looking at in terms of getting those picks. Well, ideally, so, they might be looking. At, yeah, ideally, but if the other team may not be wanting to trade those picks. And, 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 like, and, and that's what I'm saying. So now, what is your next move? Because if you're saying you wait, if, 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 but that's what I'm saying. So now, Cronin saying we're going to wait. The next team says, I don't even want to give these picks to this guy. Because some 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 GMs are petty that way. But now, yeah, no, no, but you I'm wait. Just, so the, I think that's why he mentioned if it takes one, two, three months, it it takes that long. Yeah. And I think that message was going out to Lillard and his agent that you are forcing us to go to one team only. What do you want us to do? Take anything that's offered? No. Well, then we're going to wait till another third team, fourteen that yeah. we like. And, it's, and until it's then, it's wait, you're going to wait. So yeah. either t- t- call, call the call our bluff or add two more teams in. Mm. Yeah, right? so I, I think it has to be like a for for Portland to get something back is a, like it's got to be like a at least I mean minimum is going to be a three team, but I think it ideally would have to be a four team to come in there and get picks and whatever else throwing back at them has to because like I mean Lillard's oh, yeah. contract is so it's crazy like he's deserving of it, but it, it is it is humongous, you know what I mean? So like you got to make up all that money in capital, so that that's that's the part that makes it all tough. Um, well, Portland's probably just standing back and say, "Yo, Miami, if you want this to happen, go make those calls, man. I am not making those calls. I want, <laughs> I want these picks from these teams because I know they're going to be shitty for the next few years. Go do it. Yeah, bring mm-hmm. it, bring it back for us and see, see what yeah. we get. Yeah, take as long as you want. Yeah, 
Now, now, um, you know, I was talking earlier about you know my my ideal team of him going to Philly and, and replacing Harden. But let's get to Harden for a second because why hey, is James Harden still team, garnering all, all his power? Like, why is he yet making another trade demand? He said that today. I read that literally today. He said, like, I'm still standing on where um, my initial stance, and I want to be traded because he wants that max money extension. He's, he's not, not getting he's it. He's not getting he's it. He's not getting it. He's not getting it from anybody, right? Obviously, otherwise he would have signed like this free agency, right? Like he would have opted out, right? His agent already made the calls before and realized you no, know, there's no um, financial room for a lot of these teams, right? So next year there's room apparently, right? So he's waiting. So now his agent's still making calls to teams who wants, and everybody's hesitant. Everybody's hesitant. Of course. So at the end of the day, right? Of course. He, how old? How old is Harden? I'll check. I'll check while you guys are. I'll check. I'll check right now. Okay, go well, yeah. So he's at an age where his game is clearly declining. Clearly, he's on the other but side he's of the still, age. He's still an effective player. So I'm not saying he's shit or anything like that. But he's not the same James Harden that we know, right? How old? Thirty three. Thirty three. He's thirty three. I'm not paying him no more than three years. Three years max. Three years. And so not max money. Three year contract. I mean, the term is max for me. Three years. Not with this guy's work ethic. That's fat one year, skinny, fat. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Not a chance. Oh, uh, and, then, then, and then the playoffs. Playoffs. There are games he shows up, and then there's games he doesn't. I don't want to pay that kind of money to someone who shows up and doesn't show up in playoffs. Now, like, uh, you, don't, you don't know what you're getting. Now, let's add to this, um, Anthony. He'll be 34 by the time the season starts. He's 33 right now. He's, he'll be 34 by the time the season starts. Right. What maximum contract are you giving him? Like three years, one fifty? Are, are are you are you even comfortable giving him Van Vliet money? Because I'm not. Uh, I can't even say absolutely. Actually, <sighs> I'm not. Like, uh, I'm just and, and not 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 to do with his game, just based on his age and where he's where he's heading right now. I'm not comfortable giving him like 140 million over three years or whatever Van Vliet signed for 130 mil or whatever over three years. I'm not comfortable with that. I think, yeah, yeah, you, you, both, you guys are both right. I don't think there's a team out there that would, that would even consider paying me. Hell no. Yeah. Hell no. I, I, I think, yeah, just, I think just the character alone and then the fact that he does disappear in the playoffs, I think has, has hurt his value. Mm-hmm. So you can't, you can't even find a team that would say, you know, maybe we could. I think at the end of the day, it just ends up, the conclusion ends up being, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. And, and that's because the- we don't know, we don't, we're not going to know what we're going to get from this guy. And that's the thing, like, what, exactly. at, at, at what stage at this point of his career, what is he expecting to get out of himself? Like, I never, you know, believe, but, I never believed the whole Houston rumors of him wanting to go back to Houston. Yeah, no, that never, it, it never made sense to me, like, at all. No. And, no. And, and, but and, that was the only team with money, though. That was the only team with Right, money. but it's, it still yeah. made no sense, just the way they're constructed, Agreed. the coach that they hired. I'm like, there's, there's no way that's happening. I never believed that, and then and then his request to you know apparently the rumors the request is that he wants to go to the Clippers, and I get that he wants to go back home, but I, like what self respecting team is gonna is gonna make a trade like that and shoot themselves in the foot, and it's not gonna be Dal Morey, and what other team is gonna let him be the type of point guard that has that high usage rate at his stage of his career, outside of where he's at right now, and the MVP of the league, you know whether you guys love him or not, like Embiid still wants him there, so. Like you, they got, and that's the thing too that 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 why I'm asking this question because they got rid of a coach for you. Like, what have you ever seen? Like, you guys tell me. Maybe I have this wrong. Maybe I have this messed up. But where have you guys seen a team or, or a situation where the second best player says he can't play with the coach and they get rid of him? To, to well, the I sh- missed that quote. To, 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 well, to, I... the sh- to the chagrin of the actual best player on the team. Never knew that. I never knew that. I never heard that quote. Yeah, like I've I, I never like, read where, that. Where so. have you ever seen that before? I've I've never seen that. Like he basically wanted Doc Rivers gone. They they got rid of Doc Rivers, and Embiid really? is like, and Embiid was shocked. And Embiid was like, we got rid of Doc Rivers. Like this guy got me the MVP. Like what the hell's going on here? He was shocked, and then and then they get Nick Nurse, and you still want to leave? Like that's why I'm like I'm confused by this. I don't I don't understand. It's any because of this. he's not getting the extension that he wants. But he's, he's not going to get it anywhere to, else. Yeah, but he listen, listen. If you're a Harden who's known to get max money every time, like his whole career, and you, your agent goes to the GM and says, "I want an extension of max money," and the and the GM goes, "Not doing it," 
Then the agent goes back to the player and says, he, they're not doing it. What? Blah, blah, blah. Well, let's, we want out. We don't want to be here. It's that kind of entitlement. That kind of, yeah. he's, he's a super, like, it's that feeling of being a superstar, and I should not be treated this way. That's the only reason why he wants to be treated. If they offered him an extension, you don't think he'll stay, Max? Of course he would. Of course. It's the but best they probably told him right now. They probably told him, no. Well, let's just see how it plays out and opt out and see how it goes on a free agency. They did their homework. They didn't opt out. They were like, mm, there's no there's no room on the cap. And Philly played it right. Maury played it right. So now, look, you're back with us now. And now the agent's like, okay, so now we're signing extension. No, we're still not signing you no know, extension. We're not offering. They probably offered an extension, but it wasn't max. Right? Let's be real. They're going to offer him something, but it wasn't max. So now they say, okay, we want to be traded then. They want to be, they want to play a hardball. Maury was like, okay, you want to play a hardball? Go right ahead. And now we're going to see what happens. It's, Next year. It's funny right. it's funny what environment does to you because when I remember when this guy came in the league, um I remember reading this article where he came in the league and, and he wanted to be like he wanted to get drafted to OKC because he wanted to support uh Durant and Westbrook. Like he was okay, totally fine with being the sixth man, which was that was his whole career until he got to Houston. But once that environment changed and he got a taste of the lifestyle, the money, the the status all that, that, that comes with being the man, especially in a, in a region like Houston, yo, the entitlement is on like a hundred thousand trillion. Like the way he's been <laughs> moving ever since. And I understand, but you're like, you're like, wow, like the, 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 it's the, the American way. The change, almost. Yeah. Like the change from, the American from when he came way. in to now, it's crazy. Not even from yeah, when he came expect? in, not even from when he came in, from when he was leaving OKC, when he was still at OKC and was like, yo, just pay me what I'm worth, I will, I will continue being the sixth man. So go from that to like, yo, pay me my max or I'm out of here. Like, it's just, yeah, it's, that's, it, that's a transition. That's average. That's, that's, yeah, that's a transition. That's the, average, that's the average NBA player, man. They want to play in the big market. They want max money. They want the fashion. They, come on, man. This is not no big deal to me but, for the way he's behaving. It is kind of disappointing. I think that's what you're saying. Like, these guys come in with the, with just the, the the love of the game and making it an NBA on draft day and hugging David Stern and so and then when then once that money once you once that money kicks in and you start losing and you start realizing the city is fucking smaller than fucking <laughs> Hamilton in Ontario here then you want to you want out that's just natural now he he has strippers on him and hanging out with gunner and other rappers what the fuck yeah, I, I'm okay with that I, I see where it's going yeah, and it's not just him it's like the majority of the the players, unless you're like somebody from like Giannis from another country, or people like anybody from any other country, European countries, they don't have that kind of desire or or want as most NBA players. So that's normal to me. I'm not gonna knock him on that. But at the end of the day, he ain't getting what he wants. He is not not at that age. That's why he needed it this year because next year his game is going to be magnified. I know everybody's watching, right? There's a contract here, and he's going to have to perform beyond the year previously. And is he going to be able to do that? His agent doesn't believe so, because the agent's like, yo, we got to get this done now. <laughs> we got to get this done now. <laughs> you're turning fucking 34, 34, and you're moving slower, you look heavier. No, we can't wait, because all it takes, when you get to 34, 35, all it takes is like one night to turn over and <laughs> fall off. I'm telling you, like it's, like it's like a gradual thing between 30 and 35, and then it just hits you, boom. Done. And he's been, and the right. thing is, for the most part, he's been durable for most of his career. But like, yeah, to your point, like the, has, the, the 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 off the court living, <laughs> you know what I mean? The party and all that stuff, it catches up to you after a while. And oh, he's played, and he's played a ton of minutes. Like his like since since he left OKC, he's played a ton of minutes. You know that that Houston, I think, I think that yeah. Houston that Houston career, it shaved about half a year off his life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With, with, with with the way he ran, because when he since he since he's left, he hasn't been the same guy. Yeah, he hasn't. Yeah. Been, he hasn't been the same guy, but like to me again, that's 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 the, that's the this is the third trade proposal that he's made in four years. Like, how long is this leash supposed to go? That's that's my question at this point. Like, <laughs> you know that that's that's my question. Let, let's let's move to Victor. Um, yeah. What 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 were your thoughts on Victor just in this summer league experience from what we saw so far? I mean, again, you know, we we know what to expect from him, but. And I know some people were, were were harping on him for the first game, which I thought was absolutely dumb because it's summer league. Like, you know, you, you can play bad in summer league and your career's still going to be fine. Like, I don't understand the the hoopla with him having a bad game, but from what you, from what you, from what you guys saw, what did what did you like? What do you, what is what do you guys see going forward? 
from what you saw so far? I thought he played well in the first game. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I did. O- only because of what he's capable of doing and where he was position, position-wise position on the floor. Um, it was just that you can tell that certain rebounds he wasn't getting. So, like, even for myself, just watching that first quarter, I was like, this guy's winded. Like, this guy, there's boards that he should have been grabbing easily. Oh, so, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said he played well or he didn't play well? He He played well. But you didn't say he didn't grab boards. He no, right. So that's the thing. So knowing he's a seven foot, was he seven foot three? Seven. No shoes, seven five, four shoes, whatever, whatever it's the number is now. What he's the potential and what he's capable of doing, he was able to handle the ball. The ball handling was was smooth for 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 a man that that size. It was smooth for his vision. He was making the right passes. It was it was clean for. Him rebounding, it wasn't the greatest, but you already know he was in position. He just wasn't going for it. The block shots, he had five of them. He just, the shots weren't falling for him. That was an unfortunate thing for that first game for him. So when we look past all that, I felt I felt that he played well, especially given that this was the first NBA, well, not official NBA game, but the speed, given that he's been playing overseas to now coming to over to the U.S., he handled it well. It's just that he ha- he just needs to get used to the, the type of pace over here, and people really see what's going on. So then now, when the second game he played, then you really seen him like go off. It was twenty seven and twelve three blocks, and I feel I feel like in the first game they weren't really going to him. They was like, all right, you get it, take your time. We don't need no injuries right now. And I think the second game they said, yeah, all right, let's let's kind of feature a little bit more. And yeah. he was able to show more. And once he once he saw that, they're like, "All right, we're done. <laughs> you take the rest of the summer mm-hmm. off. We're done here." He's still in Vegas, but he ain't playing no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As he shouldn't. As he shouldn't. Right. We they just wanted him to get gain that experience, and they can also take a look at what he has to offer and how he can make that adjustment because he has to start the adjustment or transition at some point. So you might as well start him in. in Summer league and the NBA wants that. Like fuck, everybody wants to see him, right? But I didn't think he played well in the first game. I understand what you mean, though. I yeah. think I know what you're saying. It's like you understand that there was an adjustment to mm-hmm. that needed to be made, and um, he was put into. He was poorly coached that first game. Like let's just be honest. Like he wasn't in position. He didn't. He even said he didn't know what the hell he was doing. What play? Mm-hmm. He didn't know what was going on. So all of that didn't help. But he didn't play well. He shot like three of seventeen or something like that. On top of that, I know it's not just scoring, but it's all around. It's a bad game. The second game, he looked much more comfortable. Um, I didn't really see all of it, but looking at the box score, he looked like he did well in terms of, and you knew the potential, as you said, Cal, but nobody's really <laughs> like critiquing him like, at his NBA career after that first game. But when you're the first overall pick and you're like this hype, like you're one of the best yeah. first picks overall since LeBron and all that, you expect more in that first game. No, I'm not going to, you know, cast throw throw stones and say he shed and his career is done but I was not impressed in that very first game but you uh, that being said his potential is still going to be he's still MVP uh, not MVP rookie of the year next year for sure I think over Scooter is not even he's still going to have minutes he's still going to develop and be that franchise changing changing player for sure but that first game was horrible yeah, yeah, the first game wasn't it wasn't the greatest. I like well, I kind of leaned a little too much towards a, to Anthony at this point, just in the sense where like I some of the stuff that I I did see, forget the shooting and all that. You know, I'm sure he was nervous too. You know what I mean? Like people are forgetting this guy's 19 years old. It is a lot of pressure. I know he's been used to it, but <laughs> for 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 what he's in a controversy on TMZ before he barely played a game. You know, with, with with Britney Spears trying to trying to reach out and touch him like Teddy Pendergrass, like yeah, I understand. I, I I totally get it. I totally understand that he might be a little nervous. It's human. It's fine. Like I get it. You know what I mean? So he didn't he didn't have the greatest game. Like his footwork wasn't the greatest. It's fine. Like a, again, like we're no nobody's look. You can you can look back and Google this if you want, but LeBron James is this summer league experience. I think he he, he shot like thirty eight percent his first you know his, his first experience in summer league. His career turned out okay, so <laughs> I'm just not saying this to you guys, but just for the people that are out there that are like, you know, like, oh man, like you didn't have a great like, pump the brakes. He's gonna be fine, and then it showed you the second game, like, like he did enough where it was like, okay, like you could see the 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 crazy potential. And I tell you, 
everybody's looking at, at the person like we compare him to. I really feel sorry for Ralph Sampson, even though he's in the Hall of Fame. But when you look at old footage of Ralph Sampson when he was in Virginia, University of Virginia, and when he just got to Houston, I'm not saying it's, it's Wembenyama, but it's not that far off. If Ralph Sampson came along now, he's pretty much Wembenyama. Like, that, like a 7'4 guy that can take the ball off the dribble, take it end-to-end, shoot outside. But back in the 80s, a guy that tall, they did not want him anywhere near the perimeter, right? And he kept looking okay, the yeah. system. But now, okay. like, yeah, now he would he would be, I mean, and, and, and don't get me wrong, even back then he was like, the, the hype on him was ridiculous. So imagine now where big men are allowed to play outside. You know what I mean? So when I see mm-hmm. Samson, I see old footage of Samson, I'm like, man, he must look at Wimbenyama and just be like, man, oh, I wish I had that, you know? Mm-hmm. But like he's, he, I mean, he's like the potential. It's it, like he's it's set up already, man. Like he's already got Duncan, uh, Ginobili, Robinson, all these guys mentoring him as we speak. Bowen, all these guys are ready. You got Pop there. You got the infrastructure. We signed, yeah. Like even Pop we signed here. Yeah. yeah, even Pop five years too. Like I don't know if he's going to stay for the whole five years, but I mean he's going to be there for as long as he wants to be, right? So I, I think he's going to be fine. Like, I don't, I don't see. Oh, he will be. Yeah. He will be. There's no question. The, the question isn't if he's going to be fine. That's, that's, right. that's a rhetorical question. We know he will be fine. Right. And, 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 and you know what, too? Like, you give him a little bit of rest, too. Like, he just had a whole season, you know, overseas, too. Like, he just played a full season. Just focus on the training and getting him used to the acclimation of the, of the team. He's still in Vegas. Like, he hasn't left the team, which is great. You know what I mean? Because most guys would have booked out by now, especially some of these like first round guys. Like once once they shut them down, they're usually out. So the fact that he's still there, like that says a lot too. You know what I mean? So I, I think, like I said, I I mean I can't wait to see what that's that's gonna look like. On that note, though, at the same time, you know I'm looking at Charlotte because obviously Charlotte was the second pick. Did Charlotte make a mistake not drafting Scoot instead of drafting Brandon Miller? What the choices did they have? What's the choice? Because you, 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 you have LaMelo Ball, so you you draft school. What do you do with that with that lineup? I I hear your argument. I hear your argument. But if you if it's hard to look at ten years from now and you look at let's say let's just say Scoot was the better player, mm-hmm. the the rule of thumb is you draft not to fit, you draft the best player. That's the right. rule of thumb. So even if you have LaMelo Ball there, you make it work somehow. Or you train somebody. Or you, or you make him play one and two. Nowadays, too, a lot of guards can play one and two. Like, Scoot could probably play two. Right? Uh, he's not really a great shooter, don't get me wrong, but you, you make it work. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I would have personally drafted Scoot, Scoot, even though you have LaMelo there. Personally, I would have. And I would have made Scoot play the two. For now, until I figure it out, I have to figure it out. But you're right, though; it's not a great fit. It is definitely not. He's a better. It wasn't a great fit in Portland either. If Dame was staying there, right? Right. To be honest with you, but I would have trapped it. I think he's a better player than Miller. Personally, that's me personally. I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody likes Scoot. Shit, I like Scoot. I, you know, how could you not? The guy's built like a 28 year old veteran. I know. You know already, I know. what is he? 19? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, crazy that, that guy that guy's built like he's I, I don't know man like it's 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 insane but you know i'm I'm up to thinking that like i think brandon miller is going to be really good like i don't know maybe it's, i think he's a skillful talent i'm not crazy about his shooting for him but mm. i think he can play and i, and I think he's going to fit in with the talent that they have over there like his, we're not going to mention though are we not going to mention the knuckleheadedness you know where i stand with oh, oh, of course of, of course how do you ignore that <laughs> are, are we are, not going to mention are, that are, are you are you on your malika andrews right now is that what you do uh, <laughs> yes i am yes i am yes i am i am actually this is the per- this is the perfect time to put on that hat i do not like these type of players at that like second overall first overall i don't mind them in the mid teens 18 19 pick overall but not at the second and third because those type of players I always feel should bring in all all the intangibles like leadership, uh, intelligence, team player. Especially after we just saw with Ja. IQ. What's that? I said especially what after we just we just saw with Ja. Yeah, but not only that. Like, did you even see his answers? Like, Paul George is the best player. Uh, well, I think he said his best player. Whatever. His, his like, goal, it, yeah. it, 
He said we're going to the final. You can just pick up little things that go along with the gun issue, the gun shit that he's been involved in. <laughs> just a little thing. You can put the pieces together. You can see uh, he's not a smart guy. Those type of guys don't do well in the locker room. Idiots don't do well in the locker room. I'm going to say that. I think he has a lot of maturity that, that needs to be done. 100%. And I, I feel that should factor in, too, if you're going to be drafting a player at that, at that height, at that number. What, yeah, what, man, for what, sure. what I thought was amazing about that whole experience, too, like, you know, a few months back at Alabama was because I didn't really watch a lot of his game until the tournament, until like at least the conference tournament and stuff. But my thinking was like, he's still top three and, and this is going on. I'm like, how good is this? Yeah. Game then? Because I'm like, damn, I'm like, that should usually knock you out of the first round at the very least, if not the whole draft. I'm like, they're still talking about him going did, number three. At, this, at, the time, at the time, they were talking about him going number three. You know what I'm saying? Much it did less drop too. a little bit. So it did drop a little bit, like that week or two weeks, and then it came back up in the month. So just to be honest, it did look. It did drop a little bit. Like, a little, like but, uh, but not much. Like not they had Tom, they had like the Thompson brothers. Like I seen like you know monster all over the place. Like, yeah. Who really knows? But it did drop for about two weeks, and then it was much bad. It started to hit and came back up again. <laughs> like it's forgotten. That's an American way, man. But I I didn't forget. I did not forget. I don't I don't forget shit like that. And you can't; those guys can't be leaders of a team. They can't be a Butlers or Dame Lillards or or Tatum's. They can't be. Not to say Tatum's a great leader, but you know what I'm saying. Like you can't well, be an asshole. Well, 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 then it makes for an interesting locker room, then, because I listen. I think Lamelo Ball is great. I don't think he's the greatest leader either. I think he's got maturity issues too. And I mean, 100%. And, 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 and then they're bringing back Miles Bridges, who's um, you know, oh. again, you know, you, now you're making me like Malika Andrews, Julian. Shit. Oh, but we're just being <laughs> human here. Look, let's come on. Let's not throw Malika under the, like, in this case. We're just being critical. We're, I we know, are, I know. I'm, I'm sharing jokes. But yes. Right, right. So we see, we're, we're not dumb. We're not dumb. And it, and it takes a good locker room to go far. It's not just talent. Right? It takes a great coach. It takes a great um, bench role. Like, it's just like you need all those intangibles to make a deep run. And I don't think he's – and you want your best player to be your, your leader too, ideally, right? Ideally. Because uh, it gets people to, 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 to follow. It keeps, it keeps players, other teammates motivated and want to do more. But when, you're, when your best player is an asshole, chances are you ain't going to the finals. Chances are. Yeah. I, it's it's, it's I, funny. I, I, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Anthony. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think, honestly, Charlotte has no plans on winning. Not even against the uh, <laughs> next year. To be honest with you. I, I, I think they already have that set because yeah. they're, they're, yeah. they're even stacked in the in the forward um, um, position as well. I mean, you got P.J. Washington coming back. You got, you got, uh, you got uh, was it Bridges coming back yeah. after that whole year off from the whole domestic violence thing? Um and then the center position, I mean, mind you, you can put P.J. Washington at the center position, but you still got no. Mark Williams, Kai Jones. Yeah. No, what, yeah, they have that center. So Mark Williams, yeah, you said, I, I like Mark Williams. I actually do. Is it Mark Williams? Is it Mark Williams? Yeah, Mark Williams. My, I'm a big fan of Mark Williams. That's all, that's all I yeah. want to say. <laughs> I'm yeah. a big fan. <laughs> I think, I think, he, fan. I think he's primed to take over that, that position. I think what getting rid of Plumlee was, was huge for them. <laughs> but now, what do you do now with, Kai Jones, I don't know. Do you move him to center? Do you move him to power forward? Yeah. Or and then also looking at um, Nick Richards, another guy that yeah, 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 solid yeah, yeah. as well, right? And Jamaican. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So his, his skill sets are limited. <laughs> he said. He said skill sets. <laughs> 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 but no, but I like I like Richard. I like with I like the big men. Mm -hmm. right? But um, we'll see how the chemistry works with with um, Miller and Bridges coming back into the fold. Now it's like minutes are going to be lost. Somebody's going to lose minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And it's about getting everybody on on board on onto the same page. So we'll see how they do. But yeah, you're right. I don't think they are playoff bound just yet. No, not at all. I mean, but mind you, again, <laughs> like, like I remember you know saying this last year too. When you lose a twenty point score and replace them with nothing, you're gonna end up in the in the high lottery like how they did this year. Like it's not really that surprising, mm. right? And then and then of course they lot. I think Ball only played like thirty six games this year. So uh, yeah. on top of that too, like you lose your best player. You lose basically your two best players for the majority of the season and have nothing to, to replace it with. You're not gonna win. Mm. You know what I mean? At, at the same time, so I think Charlotte is at the best. They're probably still gonna be a playing team at best. You know what I mean? But 
But with Miller, it's like it's funny going back to his comments about Paul George. It really speaks to how the younger generation really view Paul George, even with the playoff way off comments. That oh. play, way off was a playoff p way off p. Like even oh. with all that, the, the young I'm saying the younger generation still look at he's not he's not the first person I've heard say that they they view him in high esteem. Not necessarily a goat, but like like people really like that younger generation really loves Paul George. Like they really love him. When he talked to some of these younger guys, I'm like, I'm like, R- really? Like I know he's nice, but really, you know, they they love yeah. him. Like if somebody says that, that's my that was my favorite player growing up. That's cool with me. Mm-hmm. But I think the question was, who is like the best player? I think I'm of pretty time, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Of all time, that was the question. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy said, in my eyes, Paul George. That's when I said, you're knucklehead. And it just again further stamps <laughs> what I'm saying that he ain't too smart. There's no way you could say that. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. That's not what the question was. The question is, who's your favorite player growing up? That wasn't the question. Man, you got to hear all the other questions, the answers that he was given. I'm telling you, remember this. He's not. They're not going to go far with him on the team. And I don't think he's going to be on that team like a franchise. So, so you, play. So he you, will be traded at one point. So the way you're talking about Miller, so you, you think he's the next Michael Beasley? <laughs> it's not worth. You said worse. If not, if not, <laughs> you, I'm not talking about talent. Well, I think he's oh, no, be more no, 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 of course. I'm talking about like this off the court issues. I'm saying like this, like like cerebral intelligence team. Like I'm talking about that. I'm not talking about talent. I think he's no, going to no. be more talented. Mm-hmm. Beasley was like a tweener type player. So I always but thought, Beasley like, was yeah. hella talented too. Beasley was no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. that. You, yeah. I'm not saying he wasn't talented, but he didn't reach his potential because he was an idiot. Right. True or false? Am I wrong? Am I wrong at that? He was smoking weed, caught with weed on the table. Like, he did all these stupid yeah. fucking... You're in the league making millions, mm-hmm. and you're doing dumb shit. The, the, the one thing Come with, on, man. The one thing with Beasley that I always... That always like, and I was a Beasley fan when he was at Kansas State, but the one thing I remember that I locked, it, well, I locked in on is when he was... I remember he made the comment that he was like, he didn't feel like he was mature enough to handle the NBA yet, but because of where he was slotted in the draft, he had to go. But he was like, if it was up to him, he would have stayed another year because he realized he wasn't mature enough. So I remember when he made that comment, I was like, sure. huh, that's interesting. It's a good case of self-awareness, but damn. I'm when did he nervous. make that? Did he make, did he make that comment after his career? No, this, I that? Mean, he made this around like the time he was getting drafted. Wow. Okay. So when he said that, I was like, huh, that's interesting. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, then he, 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 I don't think he was wrong. <laughs> he was absolutely right. But I never, he, I didn't think he said that during his career. Like, I, I would never. That's a dumbass, another dumbass move. <laughs> another dumb thing to support what I'm saying. Like, he, these guys, these guys, like, I don't know, man. It, it just really bothers me when I know you have the potential to make millions of dollars. Potential to be, an, like, an all-star level player. And you don't reach it. Because you have the skills. Yeah. You have the skills, but they don't put the effort in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and or they don't the approach the game. Pardon me? And I said, and Beasley had the talent, too. That was a great. He, had, yeah. he definitely had and, the talent. And I hope I'm wrong with Miller. Like, I really do. But so far, everything has, it has not changed. He doesn't seem like a smart person. So he's talented. I saw I saw what he did in college. I saw it in even Summer League. He looked really good in Summer League. Yeah, he had a great he game really did. the night, too. He really did. It actually surprised me how well he played. I thought he was, he was nice, but yeah. I thought, oh, okay, he's actually nicer than. Yeah, he's, no, he's he's good. He's, he's I, that's why. Like I think I don't think it's like people are. There's some people that's poo pooing the the pick that like they should have drafted Scoot. And I'm like, and I understand, but I'm like, okay, this I don't think this guy's a scrub either. Like I think he's I think he's better than what people think. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying that as somebody who you know that that went second overall, mind you, but you know what I mean, but like. <laughs> You know, but I, but I think he's he definitely has like yeah I think I think he he's got talent to go to go plays. We just have to see where it goes. The mentality thing between the ears, that's a whole other thing too. We we've seen that derail many of players, many yeah. of players. And, and and Anthony, we were speaking offline about this. I won't mention the name, but <laughs> between the ears, buddy, between the ears, you, you know who I'm talking about. I'll I'll, I'll let I'll let that one rock. But if you, if you want to get a hint, we'll go to the winners and losers, you know, before we wrap up this podcast. Let's go to the Toronto Raptors. Do you guys feel like the 
<laughs> losers. Don't losers even, the, I'm not even going to let you so finish the question. <laughs> I'm not even going to let you finish the question. Losers, man. <laughs> losers to the end. And I, I'm disappointed. Sorry, Anthony, you can go ahead because I have a lot to say. You go I, ahead. But. I, I just think that it's, it's too soon to say. But obviously what we've seen so far, yes, I would agree with that. But I think Dame is holding this all up. Mm-hmm. I yeah, think he once does. he gets traded, I think then you'll start seeing some movement in terms of teams picking up certain players because, yeah, Raptors are way too quiet right now. Yeah, and you're right. Teams, when they see Miami loading up, maybe other teams will be like, yo, I got to load up too, right? Yeah. Like, we got to make a trade too to stay competitive too, yeah. to, to compete. So you're right. I, but um, from everything that I'm reading, teams are waiting for the Siakam trade to happen yeah. before Dame gets traded. I heard like that's what from reading like Mark Stein and all these other yeah. like um, beat writers, right? They were saying that all teams are yeah, yeah, all teams are waiting for this Siakam trade to happen first, and it's, they're making it sound like it's going to happen, and I think it will happen because we we know it doesn't work, Siakam, Barnes, and OG. It doesn't work. All th- four, three, six, nine players. It's not going to work, right? So, and we're not going to resign all OG and Siakam, so. So, right. so a do, of, do you give do you give OG a bigger role now? You one hundred percent. If you trade Siakam, one hundred percent. You trade Siakam, you getting you get you have to get a point guard or a guard for sure. Some mm-hmm. guard, a two like a Simon would be like so perfect. I'm not saying he's going to trade me trade to Portland, right. but like you need like that type of point guard. You can't have Schroeder and Flynn and what's the kid from you sign or somebody you know um, that you got Dotton right now. Who? That 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 Dalton Junior Junior kid. Um, he played some minutes. Um, I think he ended up eating some of. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Dalton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about the good kid, the five eight. Um, oh, New York, he, uh, Noel. No, yeah, no, yeah. You can't, no, you, can't, no, you, can't you can't, you can't go in with those four. So you need, like, you need to you bring in a guard. That you need, and that's going to be the uh, number one ask. It has to be because we can't let Shorter start for us. We cannot allow that to happen. So, yes, yeah, Siakam will have to go, and then you give OG and Barnes more minutes and more time to develop. Right? And they're Barnes. younger, too. Especially and they're Barnes. also younger, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah Barnes. Barnes and things. Siakam, I love him. I think he's worth max. So I, you, I have a bias for him because I think he's gotten better every year when he was Toronto, every year. But you know what? If I'm going to – I actually like Siakam over OG, like in terms of ceiling. I think Siakam has a high – would always have a higher ceiling than OG. Yeah, I agree. That means – that being said, he's our greatest asset, right? He's the best player. He has been our best player on our team since Kawhi left. I personally think so. And, so and, what's, we, his, we, and what's his max? Like, the, the, like right? And this is his peak. Like, be, like, how old is he? He's like 29. This is his peak. So yeah. this is the time when you trade a Siakam if you know you're not going to win at all. And that, so I'm okay with it. I'm <laughs> totally okay with it. If you bring him back, I'm a young player and a draft pick. For sure. Yeah, right, I mean, so we're losers, though. Sorry, we're, sorry, that's, sorry, we're losers <laughs> because we didn't. We let Fred Van Vliet go. Sorry, I didn't answer your question fully. We let Fred go and not get nothing for him at the deadline, and we let him go mm-hmm. on July first and not getting nothing for him. Absolutely nothing. And you know me, Calvin. I've been arguing all along. I've been on an island that we resign him, Fred Van Vliet. He's not the best point guard, but I've argued he's top five point guard in the East. Top five, or even top, I would even go top four. There's nobody better like in the East, and I will argue with both of you right now. Maybe five point guards better in the East than Fred Van Vliet. In and the East, in the East, in the East. Give me a second. You think about it while I continue <laughs> my little quick here. So my point is, if we had resigned him and then traded his ass in a year or so, we would have gotten something. I would have overpaid him. We always overpay for agents. Nobody's coming here. Let's be real. We're going to let them walk. We have this salary cap to sign players. We're not going to get anybody. We have to sign players. We got to do what Portland did with Grant and sign oh, the Middleton and Milwaukee and signing. He got some crazy, like, contract. Like, was it, like, 30, 40 mil per year or whatever? 40, 40 mil. Is, it was like 40, 40, no, mil, like, 40 mil. 43 mil a year. 43 or 44 mil a year. Something that made like that. no sense. They, made no they sense. couldn't do the that. Man. They couldn't do that. I what do you mean couldn't do what? You Toronto? wanted the Raptors to match what, what Houston was signing him for? Now they had to let him go. Oh, no, 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 no. We couldn't. We couldn't. We couldn't. We couldn't. Yeah. We couldn't. But I would have negotiated an extension like at the time. Like After the deadline, the trade deadline went, 
right? Mm-hmm. I would have negotiated like um, maybe he didn't. They try to. Don't get me wrong. We don't know what's yeah. happening behind the scenes. And, and he said, "Oh, you know what? I'll wait." But I would have somehow made it, made the trade happen or the thing. Otherwise, we're not. We're, we're losing him. Like what we did. You got to sign these guys. Everybody, even if Siakam, we can't trade Siakam. You give him the supermax. You give it to him, and then we trade him in a year because we're not going to get nothing. That's the way you you have to be if you're a GM in a small market. And these players and, and, are, it, and, it's, and it's funny how you keep calling Toronto small market, even though they're, they're technically okay. Not, you know what I mean? I but know, they are No, but they are from market. players' perspectives in regards to the way they're um, viewed. Yeah. A, a demand to wanting to be here. Right, Sorry, right, I, right, I, right. I, for sure, for sure. Right, there, there's no demand. Like, you never signed a, a big power um, house player in you in free agency. Never, ever yeah. in the history of the league of, of we've been in the NBA. Not once, I don't think. No. Don't say Demar Carroll either. Demar <laughs> Carroll. <laughs> or Turku. Or Turku. Or any of Turku. Right? We have never signed anybody. We've always done damage to trade. Not damage, meaning that we've done well in trade. Keon Clark. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Who? Clark? I said Keon Clark. Clark. I said Keon Clark. Keon Clark. Sorry. <laughs> that was a hiccup. That was a hiccup. Okay. Yeah, but you guys didn't hear it. You you guys hear what I'm saying, right? So we're losers from taking that risk and hoping that we resign Fred or a signing trade, and it never happened, right? So we're losers I, in the off season. Should I give you the point guards now or after? Yeah, give it to me now. Five better than Fred Van Vliet. Five. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with my, the lowest one, mm-hmm. but you probably can argue Drew Holiday, Milwaukee. No, he's better. I would yeah. say he's better. No, okay, he's better for sure. Darius Garland. Yep. Yeah. Trey Young. Who? Trey Young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yep. Three. Um, and then we got, uh, oh my gosh, tip of the tongue. Young man from New York just took off. Oh, Brunson. Jalen Brunson. Brunson, yep. I yeah, think Brunson's he's, a, better. He's, a, he's, a, he's a younger Van Vliet. One and more. then the last one, man, got Halliburton, man. Oh, oh man, yeah. Halliburton, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Those, those five are for sure. Definitely better. So I'm wrong, top six, man. Top six, top right. six. Point I'll, I'll, give him the, I'll give him the six for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you read, but, but my, and, my whole and, point and, is and, that and he's not and a bum. And it would be, and it would be seven if Kyrie didn't get traded. But yeah, I, hear, yeah, yeah. I, I hear exactly what you're saying, though. In terms of Fred, um, what he gives you, he's definitely up there in the East for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Like meaning, like people were like in my chat groups and were saying, "Oh, we can't guard. I mean, you can't. Yeah, you can't defend. He's too short. Blah 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 blah." But you know what? When you look at what's out there. In the East, like like who are we gonna bring in? Like for example, there's nobody in free agency. There was not one decent free agent point guard other than Fred Van Vliet. That's why he got his money. That's why he right. got his money. Right. And then Fred, what he brings in tangibles like that leadership and what he does to a locker room. And they don't have a leader now. I personally don't think they yeah. have a leader in that. In and, the and, and and Houston, like they need that leadership with all oh, the guards and every, all the young guys that they have. Is oh. like, like they did you see the yeah sorry yeah. oh no but yeah we, we we we're gonna leave that one alone <laughs> yeah that's so, okay that's why it's question too though what do you do with the point guard situation now what do you do with Kevin Porter yeah his ass has got to be shipped the fuck out of there exactly but no one's yeah. talking about that though and that, this, and this is why this yeah. is why I feel that there's a lot of there's a standstill in the league now because of one or two players on certain teams and until that happens it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a gun show. Like it's just gonna trigger pull, boom, boom, boom. You're trading, you're trading, you're gone, you're gone. And I think all these guys already know this. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, and, and I think and a lot I, of teams know this too. And I think trying to pretend. And I think Porter's contract too is not fully guaranteed. Like he's got, he, he signed an extension, but I don't think I think it was, it was basically like the one year was guaranteed. So, like he he he's probably will get guard. moved. You just on, but no, he's not a point guard. He's a guard. He's not a point guard. But then on top of that, you you drafted one of the Thompson twins, who's really good too. And I think it's, a, it's, gone. A, it's a point guard one too. Like it's yeah, you know, so I yeah, yeah I, I'm, Porter's yeah. gone. So yeah, Porter's Porter's probably out of, out of there. Or I something. wouldn't want him on my team. To be no. honest, I wouldn't want him. On and, my he's, team. And, he's, and he's still gonna want to start. And the, the, you know, the moment he doesn't start, mm-hmm. he's gonna go crazy. Knucklehead which, nonsense which he's already again. done. He's already done. Yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't want him. I would. I was actually shocked when they signed him. We signed him, but like they were the bottom of barrel team, and they, they need a young gun. So I get it. Yeah. But he's gone. He's but, gone. And you got Green and Van Vliet, right? They're, they're good. Like in the, in let the me best situation. Let me, let me throw a trade at you. Would you trade Would you trade Siakam? Mm-hmm. And... No, I'm just going to say Yes. <laughs> would, you, <laughs> would you trade Siakam to Brooklyn for Spencer Dinwiddie? 
than Cam Johnson? Ooh. Uh, no. I would what? want more. I would want you more. You would want more? Yeah. I would you want get more. your point guard, and then you get a shooter to fill the position at the four spot. I don't like Dinwiddie as a point guard. Did you see him last year? So I, I, I like Dinwiddie as a scoring guard, as a true guard, but I don't like him as my point guard. Not but for Siakam, too. Not for Siakam. But he showed that he could distribute the ball. I agree. Listen, I, I, I don't want you to understand. I don't think he, I think he's a great player. He's a good like, asset to get back in return for uh, Siakam, to be involved. Mm-hmm. But that's not enough for me. It's my point. It's not mm-hmm. enough for me. Nope. I think Siakam is underrated because he's on our team. Like, we see him every day, and we don't think, whatever, he's an all-star, but whatever. It's just Siakam. But if you look at what Siakam can do as, Six nine dribble shoot three, def- not, not really a great defender, but like rebound when he wants to assist. He was like almost seven to six seven assists. Like, I could be wrong, but it was probably one of his highest totals across the board, scoring everything. Teams don't you don't have that type of player that can do it all like that. I think we can get more. I would rather see a trade to Indiana. I don't know if you guys heard that rumor. That's yeah, probably like I've, I've heard that. But why would you, I, why would you do that in the same division though? Because it's for the assets. I don't give a fuck. Give me the assets back. Give me Nebhard. Bring in Nebhard. Give me fucking first round picks. Give me uh, Buddy Heal for a year. And just throw in a whole bunch of with, with first round picks. And thing. I'd rather have that. And those send, picks would be a little bit more Matherin. valuable. I'll take, we'll take Matherin. Oh, I think, oh, that was it too. Matherin. I'll take Matherin and get Gary Trent Jr. Give me Nebhard and Matherin, the two Canadians. And throw in a big and a, a first round. I'll take it for mm-hmm. Siakam. Like, I'd rather do that. Mm. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. And then you can get rid of the weekend's cousin, which is Gary Trent Jr., because they look alike. I don't care what anybody <laughs> Wow, else. wow. Okay, we got to go. We're trying to win. <laughs> this guy. But did Indiana draft a guard? Who did Indiana draft? Did they draft a guard as well? Uh, um, no, they drafted they, um, they, a, a four. They drafted yeah, a four guy. From, from Jer- Houston. Was it Jarris or something like that? Was it Arkansas? Something no, no, Arkansas. Walker. I can't remember his name. Okay, uh, so it's a four, a four, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. And now they're stacked at that position too. Now this is what I'm saying. All these teams are are stacking up on the same position, or are we just looking at this yeah. whole positionless basketball now, where yeah, it's basically yeah. you're on the wing, you're down here, we're playing four or one on uh, four on four on the top, one down, whatever. I mean, how is this going? Because again, now you you drafted a young four. Where you have Jalen Smith. You got Isaiah Jackson. Mm-hmm. Turner's still there. Yeah, it's, it's, Turner's still there. Are you, are you spending minutes with him? Like, what's going on here? Yeah, Jarrett Jarrett yeah. Walker, and he's like a he's like a six eight. Yeah, he's like a six eight powerful. He he's that. pretty good yeah. though. He is pretty good, yeah. but they don't they didn't really need another four. I, I didn't understand that either. No, no, and they like, they traded the other part, like Dominican Canadian kid. What's his name? Oh, yeah, Duarte. Duarte. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they were loaded at the guard, but when Matthew and Nebhart came, they bumped him right out of the out. rotation. Yeah, yeah. So no, but trade will happen. You're right, Anthony. It will happen. It's a matter of waiting. And people holding out, right? But, but, holding it, out. but it's <laughs> funny going, going back to the going back to the to, to Van Vliet before we move on to the next the next uh, winner or loser. The, the money that was thrown at him, the Raptors had to let him go, and he 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 definitely had to sign it. He was yeah, not yeah, getting yeah, that yeah. anywhere else. He no. had to sign that, and that's and the good thing with him too is that it's a three year deal. By the time he comes out of that, he's thirty two years old. He's still gonna get a nice deal going for it. He's not gonna be close to that. So two two year deal, I heard. It's no, it's a three-year deal. I don't know if it's a team. I think it's a player option for team for three years. Option, I heard. But it's, it's team a three-year option. Deal. Nobody knows. I think I'm pretty sure it was a team option third year. Okay, so either way, you can still. But I'm saying you can still go back and get another bag. It won't be as big. Yeah, as yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. But 40, 40, yeah. 43 mil a year with no state tax. You got to run with that, and he's got a chip already. So he's got a yeah, chip yeah, and yeah, an all-star yeah, yeah. already. So like, yeah, no, he's, no, got, no. he's got to get that bag. And he can no file for his money. He can file for his money to come back from Canada now too. <laughs> <laughs> um, ne- next, next winners or losers. I'm going to put these two in the same category: Jordan Poole and Chris Paul. <laughs> <laughs> winners for Golden State. Winners for Washington Wizards. Winners Washington for the both both, winners. Okay. Yeah, because Washington, they, uh, well, definitely for Washington because Washington gets Ty Jones. I'm not even worried about Jordan Poole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ty, 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 he can hoop. I yeah. thought I thought Memphis did better when Ja was out and Ty Jones took over the point. Personally, because they gave an opportunity, yeah. they gave an opportunity for Jaren Jackson to actually show what he can do. Man, um, yeah, yeah. Ha- have you seen Poole's presser and photo ops? Man, he, he looks like 
He looks like one of them kids that got left behind, like at school. You know, when when the rest of the class go on the field trip, and he didn't sign well, up for the mission slip. That's what he looked like in every photo that I've seen since he's since he's gotten to Washington. It's crazy. His ego, his ego has to have been hurt. Like oh, he, just the re-upped. he just re upped with the team, thinking the team wants you, and then within one season, they're like, "Yo, you got to leave. This ain't working." Boom. That's got to kill your ego. And, right? and, and, and not just that, but they send you to one of the worst teams too. On top, but that's that's, 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 that's hurtful, though. Yeah, no, of course. Now, mind you, you know, Chocolate City's gonna, you know, like (laughs) the nightlife and everything else. That that's that's gonna sop his tears away a little bit. He'll be he'll be okay, especially if Washington gets to play like their preseason games with the same weekend as Howard Homecoming in Washington. He'll be fine. That aspect, he'll be fine. (laughs) But everything else, yeah, it's it's a it's a definite shot to your ego. Like it's one of the worst teams. You're you're gonna be like, well. I won't say irrelevant because you're in Chocolate City, but it's going to be irrelevant in terms of winning, for, especially from where you just came from. Like, I think it's probably yeah. hitting him now that, like, wow, like this this whole opportunity was squandered in like in like yeah. in like a year. Like, I was on, I was holding the gold ball, taking the parade, getting my money up. They're they're looking at me as as like the you know like I'm I'm the pool party. I'm not even a splash brother. I'm part of the pool party, and now you know now I'm in Washington, just just chilling. <laughs> He's a man. Him, him, me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> he is, man. He is. He is. He I can't get that out of my head. Now, every time his name comes up, all I think about is what camera and murder makes you talking about the kids. I mean, he's a man. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, you said that. Could have got it for a pizza. For a slice. For a slice. Like pizza. It. But, but I, do, I do think mm-hmm. that it's a purpose now for him because now he can restart. Hopefully, this has humbled him. Yeah, I really hope this is humbled him because yeah. for him to even think, for his ego to get out of control with those players on that team, I know. Yeah, with the coaching staff, with the front office, that team was is got high characters on that team. Mm. For him to let it get out of hand, I'm trying to figure out who is within that circle that didn't say, "Hey man, I think you need to chill, man." Because listen, Clay was hurt and he had to take over. Mind you, he sorry. It started off with. He got the minutes. Clay was coming back, but he was still eating most of the minutes because Clay was still kind of getting back to the rhythm, and he did well. But then he got a different role. Or sorry, what was it? He Clay was gone. He he had the minutes. Mm-hmm. The ball was in his hands, and you can see that the the ego was building there. Mm-hmm. And you're like, ah oh, man, this is about to get out of hand. Clay comes back, but they still were giving Jordan the touches, as opposed to Clay kind of being Clay. But again, Clay needed he needs a full season to get to where he needs to be at. Mm-hmm. And he's still working on it. So now with the whole Draymond situation, that obviously was not anything good for him, but it got to where it got to and it was still bad. So I think even what after him getting his, his lights punched out, he was still being weird. Like he yeah. his eye language um during games. It, it just didn't seem like he wanted to be there, and the playoffs was like it was the the body language was really bad during the playoffs. It was real bad during that point. Right. It so was, I think now for him, he gets a fresh new start, goes to Washington. You know what? Now you can take that knowledge that you gained from being on that championship team, and and pass it on to the young fellas that you're not playing with. Yeah. I don't know if but, he's going to clash with Kyle Kuzma. I don't see that happening, by the way. Him passing knowledge and being a leader and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, he's, 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 he's young himself. No? He's young himself. He's that's not happening yet. No. He's got to he's, he's, he's got to get these shots. Yeah, first. But, yeah. I think he's going to be playing for his own. Mm-hmm. And I know. I hear what you're saying. I hope it humbled him. Yeah. I hope he learned something from from being in the locker room with Draymond and Steph and Coach Kerr. Like, you hope all of those things. If they traded him, I think they see that there's no hope for him. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I think that they think that's it. Mind you, they had to re up Draymond. They didn't, they needed to free up money and all yeah, that. But they, they still traded and, him and, and to the free luxury, up the money. And the luxury tax was like uh, they're still going to get hit crazy. But right? do, you think, so, do you think it was more than the money though? Do you think also, I mean, beyond oh, the more. ego and the money that they also had to free up some space for minutes for uh, Moses Moody because he sold some things too. Yeah, Moody, yeah. Kamunga, Kamu- Kamu- yeah, Kamu- all those guys. Yeah, 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 for sure. But at the same time, they was at his expense, Pool's expense. We're trading. We're, we're trading you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They didn't trade like Wiggins. They didn't trade anybody else. They were trading you. Like so, they they found them to be expendable and not worth that money. 
which mm-hmm. he isn't. At, at like, with, like playoffs is again, you can judge a, a player to me. I do for, in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and adversity and you know, and fighting through your struggles, and he wasn't able to do so. So it maybe it's, it's not fair, but if you're paying that kind of money. It is fair to be critiqued and, like and, that. And, and Julian, like, let's be real. Like, I think he's going to be as humble as possible until, until he goes to park about three, four times. <laughs> that's a nightclub, Anthony. It's a nightclub. <laughs> once, once that happens, yeah, that, all that's out the window. Yeah, yeah with all that money, we are, we know what he what he is capable of doing with that money. I, I mean, yeah? look, 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 think, <laughs> look, I, I, I said this in a, I said this in one of the chat groups. I don't know if I don't know if you were in it. I think you were. I think I said this in the chat, Julie. Like, like mm-hmm. if if he's throwing half a million of ice spice, the chocolate city girls are going to deplete his funds. Yeah. They're, they're going to drain that. Right. I hope that's a rumor. It's a lie. I, ho- I, I hope, hope that is too. I hope that is too. Even, even, but even if even if it's even if it's fifty thousand, you're like, dude, what are you doing? Right? It's so, embarrassing. So, so, I would have said so, it so, so, so trust too. me, he's gonna be on high alert, on a high alert when he walk at the moment he steps into a club. <laughs> you gonna pick him up in fantasy? <laughs> I, w- I would, I would, because he's gonna do just- <laughs> shots. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> for scoring, maybe, maybe for scoring, because he's gonna average about twenty, twenty, twenty. I would say twenty four to twenty five. He's gonna average. I don't know what the the efficiency is gonna be though, but he he will get it up. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. What, As now we gotta move to Chris Paul though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think he. I think I think he fits well with the Warriors, even if he comes off the bench. That's gotta be a blow for his ego too, though. Because I mean, think about it. Like, yeah, he's getting older, but this is the team that you've basically been a rival for for the longest while, and it's like now you now you're gonna be playing twenty twenty five minutes. You're gonna be backing up Steph. But imagine when when he was the the the, the point god, it was Steph Curry that he was like, "Come, little brother, you can be on these State Farm commercials with me." And then all of a sudden, he, he just got eclipsed <laughs> to the point now that now at at this stage you're now back. You're gonna be essentially backing him up. That's, that's that's wild to me. I mean, mind you, like he's he's gonna have an impact, but I, like I, I don't see them. I don't know. I don't I don't see this 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 uh, this move being the the reason why they're gonna win a chip. I, I don't think I don't think it moves the needle for them personally. So so you don't think with Steph having so much attention on him, and Steph is more effective when he comes off all those multiple screens he comes off of. Yeah. When that ball is no longer in his hand, and you have someone that can create. For anybody with a low turnover ratio, I, I'm, you I'm, don't, I'm not saying you, he's. I don't mean to cut you. I'm not saying he doesn't. He's not going to help to make them better. He's not going to be healthy enough for at the last. I don't even care if he's playing 25 minutes a game. I think, that, I think I think that would be beneficial for him though, because now you do that in a regular season, and now come playoff time, now you up it to 30 minutes. In the ideal world, yes, but not with Chris Paul. Mm-hmm. He's turning how old? He's 38 right now. Oh my God. And listen, there's no <laughs> way. I don't care how many, I don't care if you rest him to the year, he's going to get hurt. He's been, mm-hmm. That's his whole career. Not whole career. His whole second half career, I'm mm-hmm. guessing. There's no way as he gets older, it's going to get any better. Yeah, he's, he's, mm-hmm. I mean, he's, hurt, he's hurt right now. <laughs> I'm sure. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being stupid, but yeah, but yeah. but but yeah, but like I said, yeah. it's it's you know he, he's not gonna last. I don't think I just don't see him lasting. No, and if you look at the money, if you look at how much you get paid to do it, it it's not thirty million. Worth it. It's not worth it from a Golden State standpoint. But but the only but they want, it was worth it for them to get rid of pool. Yeah, yeah, but but the only reason why too is it's money. That his he comes off the books after after next season. And only half his contract is guaranteed. Well, no, it's now it's guaranteed because he made the he, he opted in for the trade. But after this season, he comes off the books. So I think that's why, as opposed to keeping pool for another three years in that awkward environment, and you're still paying yeah, him thirty yeah. something mil, right? You want to know something crazy? What's that? I think I would put a hundred dollars. On the odds that they win the championship. Oh no, you okay? You'll put it on the odds just for the, just to win out. You'll probably yeah. yeah okay, I thought you want to take a one one on one bet. No, 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 no. Okay, that's fine. I didn't, on the, uh, that's fine. I didn't on the realize they, they picked up Corey I'll, Joseph too. Right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't know know that. That. Come on, Corey's not the same Corey. 
No, no. But still, I, I didn't know that they picked him up, though. That's the whole point. I, I didn't know they picked him up. I don't know. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I did. There's, there's, there's been some sneaky pickups, man. Uh, Golden State is, I mean, Golden State's not, no, not necessarily a sneaky one. I think Utah's sneaky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Utah is. Yeah. Uh, I think I think people are, again, because, I mean, the Clippers are a bus, but if everyone's healthy, I think the Clippers end up winning because of them re-signing Westbrook, who will end up coming off the bench to to fill the void of whatever is needed for the second unit. You think he's going to do that with the Clippers? Yeah, I can because see he, didn't, he didn't he, he didn't do too bad. But then again, it's because Paul George wasn't there. But if he get, if he brings that same kind of energy for the second unit, while Paul George and Kawhi handle handle the the the, um, the usage or whatever in the in the first unit. I think, remember, they haven't gotten rid of Covington or Batum yet. They're probably going to be gone soon, but as of right now, defensively, I don't think I want to see Clippers. Uh, oh, okay. What about the Lakers? The Lakers are winners or losers of the offseason? They're winners. I mean, on paper, everything looks good. <laughs> AD's, my, AD's my guys. I, I don't want to blow in this direction. He might fly away. Man gets hurt off of anything. <laughs> But maybe he might be healthy. I hope he's healthy because when he's healthy, he is a problem. Who he's talking about? Ad, yeah, yeah, yeah. he is a problem. So if he stays healthy, LeBron's going to be LeBron. You got Gabe, but then you got D'Angelo. What are you going to do with that? Not too sure. I would hope that you end up going. Me personally, whoever's in the first unit, you're probably going to lose because LeBron's going to have that ball in his hand. Anyways. But sorry, did D'Angelo resign with Lakers? Yeah, he, he resigned with the Lakers. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So and good. then you got Austin Reeves. I mean, they're 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 he, looking at the same thing. Less than I thought. I thought he was he would have gone for more. Me too. I did they, think they so signed too. a good deal. That was actually a good deal for the Lakers, mind you. Not I don't know necessarily him, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But but mm-hmm. I but like I said in the last podcast, I feel like whatever money he doesn't make on the open market, he's gonna make back up an endorsement just being in L.A., especially if they're good. Like he'll he's he's gonna get it. He's gonna get some kickback just being in and where he's at in that that uh, that climate, that environment. So, I was in LA last week. Oh, he's on billboards already. Mm. There you go. There you Great. Go. Yeah, there you go. There you go, right there. There you go. But I I, I think like <clears throat> I'm I'm actually happy that the Lakers actually did the right thing and re-signed all of these guys back because I thought they, that was a really the way they played. And you know, I'm not the biggest Laker fan and all that, but like they played really well. That whole playoffs, but the style that they played, it wasn't like give Le- Le- LeBron the ball and everybody get out of the way. I think it was kind of like there, everybody was uh, was a cog in the wheel. You know what I mean? Like that's how they played. Like there was games where like Austin River, Austin Rivers, Austin Reeves basically was leading the offense and going one on one. There was games where D'Angelo Russell did it. There was games where quarters were only like there's only, there's, there's only one with D'Angelo but no, no, but, but I, <laughs> you missed out on Hashimura though <laughs> no, I was gonna say but I, I was gonna say there's quarters where Hashimura did it you know what I mean like they're like I thought on top of what LeBron and those guys are already bringing to the table so I thought the way they ran the offense was really good so I, I would like for to bringing all those guys back I thought that was smart like I thought because normally they will do the thing of trying to get the super team and blow the team up and try to get the third star I'm glad they did it this way because I think they got more depth. They can play together. They proved it. Yeah, they weren't as good as Denver, but you know, you you take your chance and see what happens, right? You take your chance and see what happens the following season. Yeah. You never know. But I thought it was the right yeah. deal. They're winners to me. They're winners to me. Yeah, they are winners. They are winners. Yeah, I agree too as well. What about Denver? Losers. Wow. Now tell me why. They lost what Brown and, and replaced Green. him with Justin Holiday. Uh, who else did it? Justin Holiday. No, that, he's not going to replace him defensively. They, Maybe possibly, but, but he's not now, replacing the, the. Go ahead. For the point guard position, you still have Reggie Jackson. Yeah, but I mean, he didn't even what do you play. Mean, like, he didn't even play in the playoffs. Yeah, oh, but, I, 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 not, but that's because Bruce, that's because Bruce Brown was handling the point guard position. Behind yeah, him. yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, no, it was. It was. They didn't really have a, a backup point guard. Not they really. Not I mean, you got Jokic that brings up the ball. So yeah, they didn't really have a backup point they, the whole year. Whoever, play, uh, what's his name, Caldwell Pope played. Um, he's a shooting guard, but he played backup point guard. That's how. That's how bad they needed a backup point guard when yeah. they signed Reggie Jackson. I, oh, they no, they traded for him. I think the Clippers. Traded, traded for him. Yeah. 
at the at the deadline. Got, got even the then, time. even then, he didn't play. But though, if you know the guy that they want to replace uh, Brown or to step up is that Brown kid. Yeah, is it Brown? Yeah, that's yeah, who they want. Brown. It ain't gonna be no Justin Jackson. I mean, Holiday Justin. Oh man, man, uh, man I, and they lost Brown. And they lost that's somebody else. He's good, man. Who it was that? Didn't they lose somebody else too, though, other than Brown? Two players. Um, yeah. No, Green? I think it was. Just, Oh yeah, Jeff Green went to Houston. That's Jeff right. Green. I like Green off the bench, man. I, I did I too. Like Green. I liked him for that team too, actually. Leadership. Did you see how he was like coaching on the like? Oh, no, I thought they was definitely they didn't find anybody. Did they? Other than Holiday, he, he gave he gave good minutes for the most part in the playoffs. Yeah, he did play. Yeah, he like, did. He did. Yeah, he was Surprising. definitely solid. I I didn't. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know what they were offering or what their cap space is because, like I said, this new salary cap is going to change the league, man. It's changing it already because yeah. teams are making the moves that teams are making already. It's reflective of this cap that's coming, right? So. So I'm not, I'm not surprised. Yeah. And and then for – and that's the thing with the Pacers, too. We'll get to them in a second. But, you know, to, to sign – I mean, Bruce Brown, I, he, like he was making $3 million last year. They, they His salary went up to 22 mil. You know, like for a guy coming off the bench, you can't give him $22 million, man. You got to let him yeah, – he Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. He went to Indiana, right? Right. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Who that was other guard you talking somebody in. I was asking. They brought in somebody else, another guard, and I thought they drafted, but it wasn't drafted. No. It was Brown. It was Brown. That was it. That was mind-boggling, signing a Brown. That was so – because they had Matherin. They had, I know. Like, it made no sense. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I and, did and not to overpay that. to that degree. Like, they were competing with themselves for that price. Only thing I thought of that they were going to trade, I thought they were going to trade Mathur to uh, Toronto or package him or something. That's uh-huh. my, that, that was my brain thinking. I was like, why would they do this? It makes no sense. So there's something going on, <laughs> um, on the on the wire right now. Apparently, they're saying that they're looking at moving um, what's the young, the backup point guard for the Pacers. Uh, no, the other one. He's good. He's good. He's good. McConnell. That guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're talking yeah. about moving him, trading him for um, Cameron Payton to Phoenix. Oh. For, for who? For who? For Cameron Payton. Okay. Oh, really? Cameron, Cameron, Cameron Payton. Payton. Yeah, really? Payton. 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 Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. yeah, I can see that. So now does that now free up some space for for Bruce and then possibly slide then Barbara more to the uh, – no, no, no. McConnell wasn't really playing that much for the year, man. Like, like this year, that pass, he yeah, years that, past, he was like the, he was like the first point guard off the bench. Yeah, but yeah. Neb Hart came in and just took took over. Took over but that was before the end of the season, though. Nah, nah. It took a while because when, after after Halliburton got hurt, Neb Hart took over in the starter yeah. role. McConnell took over the the backer role, and McConnell yeah. was playing solid minutes. He was giving he was putting up numbers for 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 the minutes he was. He was getting a small stretch of that season, maybe like right. one week or two weeks. Right. That is it. Right. Then Halliburton came back. Yeah. Halliburton came back, and then Nemba was kind of like, nah. like he had a stretch, but he 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 was he was a guy. And then all of a sudden, it was like, uh, you know, what, let's let's move this over, give it back to McConnell. And then I guess at that point, it was like, okay, we're out of the playoff running, and it just turned into, like, listen, just let these young guys run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. McConnell's an asset, but he just doesn't fit to, on that team anymore. They have enough guards. Mm. Yeah, Let's exactly. Just be I like him. I like he's a that, that, that hard is a really good backup. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, he's young, yeah, and he's I, young. It doesn't cost as much either. Would you yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you would you would, would you trade have the Raptors trade for McConnell? Yeah, I I would have him included in the deal, one hundred percent. Absolutely. Like like with the, like Siakam for like involved in like a package deal with three four players, I would have him included. Yeah, one hundred percent. And cut fucking Flynn off the team. Cut Flynn, <laughs> and you go with Schroeder. Mapano and grab another guard. We have no. We don't even have a two guard behind Gary Trent. Who's our two guard behind Trent? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're looking at Grady. You're looking at Grady right now. Well, he's six eight. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, he's Grady a Grady Dick. Yeah, yeah, right. So that's what we need a guard. We have zero guards. It could be Grady Dick as long as you're going on a youth movement. He will get eaten by like uh Of course, a but if it's a youth or, movement, then a two you guard, care. A BO. Like, oh, he can't guard a two guard. I didn't say he could. I'm just saying that if you're on a youth movement, why do you care? Just develop him, right? Throw him into the fire. No, not that. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, come, I'll let him be the six man, come in small forward or something. He's slow. Because he has no motor to cover a guard. Mm. He's long, though. For, he's oh, yeah, he's, no, he he's is. He's underrated, though. That's what I'm saying, but not for a two guard. You can't cover. Like I hear you saying, "Cal, just throw him out there." Who fucking cares at this point? <laughs> we, we got nobody else. 
<laughs> you don't say don't make the playoffs? Not even the playoffs? Raptors? Yeah. If Raptors trade Siakam, we will. We trade Siakam and we get back, because I think we're going to get a haul. Not a haul, but a starter, for sure. Would you take Ben Simmons? No, come no, on, stop come on, now. man! Stop, stop with this Ben Simmons stop thing. Yeah, it's low value, man. It's low value. It's thirty million dollars. Thirty-three million dollars. You're right. Low value. You're right. But Siakam's also thirty-seven, so you're saving four million right there. So you take low value guy, <laughs> prove yourself. But we don't need you to shoot. We got other. We got other players that need different roles now. So you take someone that has a role of being the number one option. Now you bring someone else in to distribute the ball, and then you put. OG in that role to be that number one option. Did you watch any any of his highlights in, um, last year? Any any of his highlights? <laughs> no, he was, he, he was non-existent. When he was on the floor, he was still garbage. I don't know what happened to him. This is not Philly Ben Simmons. I, we're I talking about Brooklyn. Yeah. Brooklyn, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're not, this... we're not, sorry, yeah. But we're not, think, we're not talking about Philly Ben Simmons. We're talking no, about Brooklyn Ben Simmons. Right. So this is the thing. This is the thing that doesn't make sense to me. He said he couldn't play because of the mental thing in Philly, but then he went to New York. I don't know what the difference is. I would think it's worse, personally. What's the difference between Philly and New York? Well, he had no choice when he got traded. He was You're right there. But, but, then, but then when he got to Brooklyn, he said it was his back. Yeah, That's what he, he said. He said he it was his back. He, he can't use the mental health system anymore. Mind no, you, no, no, I'm no. not trying to downplay that, but at the same time, his ego... I don't know how all of a sudden this mental health came into play all of a sudden. I'm just saying. I find it questionable. But they, but they did say, too, that he's still not clear for 5-on-5 five five yet. With, yeah, with stop his it. Stop it now. Just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> just stop it. <laughs> just stop it. His game is nowhere near where it was before, so of no. course his people are going to say no. that, or even the team. Because if you, because you can't devalue your own asset. You can't. So you got to say, like, shit, like, he's not ready. He's not. As a team, I'm doing that, too, because the guy's shit. <laughs> I can't let him go out there and play and let everybody watch and see how shitty he is. I'm not going to get nothing for him. I would rather keep him off and try to trade him off of his Philly years, like what fucking Philly did to Brooklyn. What? Right? what? Remember the time when it was a Siakam and Ben Simmons shit at one for one deal? Like, I saw that proposal so many times, but I was like, at one point, I was like, yeah, it's not that bad of a deal. It's not that bad of a deal. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? What's crazy yeah. when you when you watch Philly highlights, like when he was on when when he like especially before oh, he got traded, that, it's like night and day. Uh, it is like night that, and day. Yeah, you you know he couldn't shoot, but at least before I'm like, man, at least before he drove, I'm like he's not even doing that anymore. He's not even yeah. looking at the basket. Like I mean, d- like if he can go back in time, he should have just dunked on Trey Young. Like he, he would eliminate all these problems. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but he was a knucklehead from day one, though. You remember that he was a knucklehead from oh, day yeah. one. First from LSU days, mm. all the way to Philly, a knucklehead off the court. Remember, his own family disowned him. Yeah. His own sisters and all that. I don't know if you follow all yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody hated him. Whoever he encountered hated him. What does that tell you? In the locker room, then the people are going to hate him. Oh, never mind. Doc okay. Rivers didn't like him. Nobody likes this guy. And okay, that tells you you're, you're limited. You're going to be limited on, on floor as a, as a skill set wise. You're going to be limited because your brain is fucked. Okay. I don't want yeah, guys like that. Disregard then. Disregard what I said. Then I will not be saying this. I didn't know all that. that, that <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Problems in the locker room is one thing I'm not. Yeah, I'm not bad. Oh, you didn't know he was a knucklehead? You I, know, I, 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 I knew he was a knucklehead, but not to that extent. Oh, man. His own family. Go look up. Go type his family with fucking Simmons. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. I'm going to check that one out. Well, what, but anyhow. I, actually, well, I've got two more names and then we'll wrap up. Boston Celtics, winners or losers? Losers. <laughs> I agree with Anthony. There's the one. I did not understand. Stand this move at all? I did, and then they re-upped. I fucking Przingis right said after that too. I think they no, re-upped. Re-upped? No, I could be wrong. No, no, I could be wrong. No, no, okay. no. No, I think they're, I think they're I think they're in talks about they uh, signed him. They yeah. Sorry, they signed like his. Sorry, they, they traded for him and then they took his team option or something like that. Like getting that. Yeah, something, something like that. Okay. I can't remember clearly, but they they did. Yeah, they did sign him. They took his team option for next year, and like a year after this year. But I never understood that deal at all. But I thought I did understand it because they had Dirk Wright White, and they did have um, is Bronson still there? Yeah, yeah. still. I, but I think they're so, still trying to move him. Yeah, but they're, they're, yeah, they're still trying to move. They're still trying to. So they had some assets at point at guard. So, but you can't trade smart. You trade Brogdon, man. You keep smart. Uh, well, I think they fucking... they tried to trade Brogdon. Remember, they tried to trade yeah, him, they but did. then these but guys. His, 
what is it? Is his it's foot health. or something? Yeah, it's something to do. He didn't pass the physical. He didn't pass the physical. Yeah, so there's something going on with his with his in. So that's why they traded Smart. But the thing is, it was crazy because they they got back a first round pick for Smart. So you got Przingis on the first round pick. I understand it, but at the same time, to your point, like you lost the heart and soul of your team, basically, yeah, right? Yeah. For for a guy that like can't really stay on the floor. They needed the size though. So again, first round pick, a, a guy that's seven three. If we can unlock some of his remaining potential then i get it too but at the same time it's like yeah i don't know if i would have pulled that trade because i mean they they almost i mean i mean they're almost in the finals right like they 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 almost got swept but i mean they almost made the finals they got to game seven right so you know but i i i i understand it but i the, i understand why they did it but it's like you gave up the heart and the soul so everybody has them penciled in to win the east and i'm like slow down again like pump the brakes on that yeah I don't know about that one just yet. Not for Pazingas. Pazingas is not really a playoff like, player. <laughs> I like mean, he Mark hasn't been in the playoffs about. that often, to be honest with you, either. But, no, no, you no. Know. In, off injured, too, right? He hasn't played yeah. really, like, I don't think more than, like, 60 games, 65 games. every Like, in his career, just New York days, he's been off. So, like, all those little things. But I do get it. They wanted size, and they wanted that first-round pick. So they saw the opportunity and said, okay, let me take it. Memphis is the winners though because they, they between Smart and and um and Derrick Rose they got a lot of mentoring for Ja now, so yeah. that in itself is going to make them the winners and 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 with Smart like you, you know I think he cha- he kind of changes the culture he kind of it's crazy to say because when he came in the league he had a little bit of that hot head knucklehead issues too but the way he's matured yeah, he that's going to help that locker room a lot because they're so cocky they need a little bit they need some vets in there. We've been saying that for the longest time. This team is screaming for We've back. been saying that. Yes, yeah. we have been saying that. Yeah, so so the fact that he's there now, like it's he's gonna shore up that culture. And I think that's it's a great move. Like him him and even Derek Rose too. I think it's cause they want Derek Rose to play. So, you know, I don't know how much he's gonna give, but I think that's more for Ja and more for that locker room, which which they need. They they desperately need that. Um the the last the last team I wanna throw in there for winners and losers is the Pacers. Uh, who did they bring in Brown and who else did they bring in Brown and, and then there's and the, they, the picks they, and, they, and they traded for Obi Toppin too oh right. yeah. why are we oh, they're really stats at the four losers yeah I don't see like yeah not an impact yeah. like they didn't they got a log jam before yeah they're losers too I, I agree yeah yeah. No, no, I don't see nothing really to talk about there I like Brown but but come on like yeah. this is not 40, 45 I, mil for two signing. years I know that's, that's, that's wild 45 mils. And, and he I, played well, then, but he, not that well. No, he, he did. But to me, it's like when you make this kind of like leap and, and overpayment of a player, you're, you're, to me, I'm like, if you're going to do that, you're expecting, you're expecting like some sort of leap with your team, at least to make the playoffs, that type of thing. And I'm like, even if you yeah. make the playoffs, it's going to be low first round at best. Like, why are you going to pay him 22 mil? Because he's in there, it's, it's Indiana, right? Like, at the end of the day, they probably look at nobody that's overpay and, but going back to my original point, they didn't even need him. Mm-hmm. They didn't even need him with Mather in there. So I don't get that at all, unless there's another deal in the in the works or they yes. plan to make more deals. Because yeah. they got Drew Hall, not Drew. Um, what's his name? Uh, Buddy Buddy Hield, right? Buddy, so Buddy, Hield, yeah. Yeah. Buddy Hield, yeah. Right. That's another two guard, right? He's not really a point guard. You got Halliburton, the point guard. You got two. You got Matherin and Buddy Hield. Somebody has to go. And Brown. And you're not gonna. I. I. Maybe they sign him to come off the bench. Maybe I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But may, but maybe too. Maybe maybe that's like I said. This this uh, the Siakam smoke. Maybe that's what that's for, right? To to give up some of these assets. Buddy Hill, McConnell, and if they don't want to give up Matthew and Nebhart, fine, and a couple of first round picks. Yeah. Right, and that and that puts them that puts them right into like playoff contention for sure. Yeah. Siakam and Turner. Halliburton, that's like a big three, like um, not really a big three, but you know, it's like a three core uh, players you can get you into the playoffs for sure. Yeah, yeah, for I sure. think so, right? Sure. So trap picks, and then fucking, I'll take Heald and McConnell and slick in somebody else. I don't know. No, nah, I would really, like, I'll, I'll, I'll really take, want Matherin. But, I'll take the first round now. <laughs> well, a bunch of first round picks with those players. I'm saying, oh hell no! But well, how, many contracts contracts look, how, how, many, how many first rounds are we looking at? I would personally want at least two minimum. I don't know if you're getting that. I don't know if you're getting that. But see, I can, well, if you're going to give me fucking McConnell, you better, give, he, me two, you better give me two first-round picks. No, but if you're getting healed, though, 
I think, yeah, that's, he, I, I think that's gonna offset your your, your first round picks though. Yeah, like and then I don't. Yeah, yeah, but healed healed is who he is. Like he's not uh, a player that should be involved in a Siakam type play. Like he, like he's he's the best player coming back. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And he is not a like a, a player, a star caliber player, a starting player you would want in a Siakam trade. This is basically what I'm saying. I would want a starter and a couple and two or, first or, or a young stud. Yes, or a young set, yeah. which we're not getting. If they're not going to give us Matherman or even Nev Hollard, I doubt they'll give up. But give me two first round picks, man, yeah. for sure, yeah. with Heald and McConnell. But the Cosmos got to match up with Siakam, right? So, mm-hmm. And will Siakam will be willing to re up with Indiana? I doubt that. But that's why we have a difficult time trading, too. Because he basically gives them a list of teams that he would be signed. And it seems like it's only like right now, it's like Atlanta was like a team I keep hearing more and more that like he's willing to re sign with. That he's willing to? Well, I assume so because um, that's the strongest rumor that um, it's been happening. Because the rumor has always been that he wants to resign with Toronto. He doesn't want to go anywhere. And then I hear that it's Atlanta, Atlanta, everything with Atlanta for like good two, three weeks. So my assumption was that yes, Atlanta has he has agreed to sign with resign with Atlanta. That's my assumption, and that's where I'm hearing all these proposals. But I don't want anybody from Atlanta, personally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. I or maybe not even Murray. I would want. I don't really like Murray. And they they no, they, they extended no. him too. Yeah. But they did. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't even really like Murray. I don't even really like Murray. I like. Murray. I don't even. Really, I did. I, I like him I like in San Antonio. Murray, it, yeah. I I, I like, like Murray, it. but he's <laughs> he, he's a bit of a hothead himself. Like. I think. Oh no no no! He's got it together. He's got it together. He's Is one it? of the. No, few that, he's a hothead, my friend. No, nah, no, nah, he's got. He's one of the few that's got it together. Trust, okay, so trust, I had maybe a, a strong description, but he is emotional. Like he is a player. Like you saw what happened last year with with the, the rookie in Orlando, and I saw some interviews with yeah, him. Yeah, but that that's that, that that's what it's like in Seattle, though. You ain't going to start to y'all crazy when I I help you get up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I help I help you, young fellow. Like, you talk me crazy I, like that in summer. League. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But like there were some issues in San Antonio too, right? And why they wanted to trade him out too. So. Anyhow, there's a reason why. But I hear you. Who knows? It's one, knows? It's one, it's one of the few players that doesn't drink. So mm-hmm. I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's, actually, I never knew that. The Seattle, that connect. The Seattle Connect. I'm sorry, I'm a little biased, but it's so okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you. I, I forgot that connection. <laughs> I forgot that connection. Yeah, Seahawks still suck. Anyways, let's wrap up oh, the podcast, man. brothers. Thank you for hopping <laughs> on that. <laughs> oh, speaking of, before you go, I might be going for a game for Seattle in Seattle. Then with New Year's Day, I might go. Joel told me, told me to come down. Oh, okay. I'll tell you offline. Yeah, so are they playing go. in Vegas or are they playing in Seattle? So Vegas is playing in, have a, you know, they do the Winter Classic and all that stuff, right? So this year's Winter Classic is in uh, Seattle oh, on New Year's shoot. Day. Oh, oh, is it? Is, uh, right. So then, so then, um, the Seahawks play Pittsburgh Ooh. on that Sunday. Steelers play. Yeah, Steelers are in Seattle on January on, on that January first, I think. Oh, January second. No, something like that. Don't, don't say that. I'll go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shoot. Can I? Can I? Can I come? <laughs> so we found you. Yeah, we got to book this down. Both the teams. He was in Seahawks. I think it was January second. But anyhow, but he's going to be out there. A- Anthony, you hear I said I can come. You see, I just ignored that. Just damn. This, this <laughs> wow. Anybody, the negativity from your end. Yeah, you keep that <laughs> Yeah, you don't know. I'm, I'm gonna start a brawl because I'm showing up there with my wow. Niners jersey. I'm gonna start a brawl. <laughs> I heard you. you I heard you loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just being polite. I'm just being polite. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all it's all good. It's all good. I'm 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 trying to take a trip to Cal and uh, around that time anyway. So it's all good. It's all okay. good. All right. All right. <laughs> Anyhow, Seahawks. Go go Hawks. Yeah. yeah. Go Hawks. Man. Yeah, go Niners. But like I said, brothers, no, thank you, thank you all for for hopping on this podcast, man, and really breaking this whole off season down, man. This is extensive, but I, I enjoyed the conversation, so I appreciate the both of you guys for for hopping on. No problem, no problem. Thanks for having us. Yeah, man. Thank you for checking out the latest edition of the AF Podcast. Uh, special shout out goes out to the South Shore family member Julian, aka Jews the Commish as well as Anthony Bachelor for hopping on and talking about the NBA offseason and everything that's going along with it this summer. 
Uh, we'll have a new episode next week for you. So I appreciate the love and support as always. Um, once again, please check out the South Sharav website for the catalog at SouthSharav.com. And as always, South Sharav is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you tune in. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher until the end of August at least. <laughs> tune in, Alexa, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to it. Please subscribe, 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 subscribe. Hit that like button, hit that favorite button, whichever one, whichever button that offers the support, make sure you click on that one. And if you're on Spotify and if you are definitely on Apple Podcasts, make sure you hit the five stars. Don't be that person that doesn't click on that. We don't support hatred. I know you got love for me, so hit those five stars for me. All right. <laughs> Um, we'll be back once again with a new episode next week. Um, if you're here for Caravana, um, which is going to be the first week in August, I got an annual event that's coming up. It's our 15th annual event, our annual Sunday afternoon rooftop barbecue party. Uh, make sure you check that out as well. You can uh, hit me up for tickets or message me. You can hit me up on, on the comments, wherever you listen to podcasts or hit me up directly. You can go on my Instagram handle at calcium, C-A-L-C-E-E-E-M. Go directly for the tickets. If you want more information, I got a bunch of posts in there. So check that out as well. All right. So we will be back once again next week um, and just laying out the rest of the summer feed with more interviews and everything else. So, you know, I'm, I'm back in the running. Thank you very much for all the support as always. For Julian, a.k.a. Juice of Commission, Anthony Bachelor, this is Cal C. And you just tuned into the latest, the latest edition of the App Podcast right here on South Sharaf Radio. All right, until next week, we out. <laughs>